Hello, good afternoon again. So we have some students here in our um, STEM function hall. Pwede ba ako makarinig ng kahit na anong pagbate sa maulang ako natin ngayon? Hello! So this morning we had a successful CHE Employers Forum and this afternoon on behalf of the organizing committee, the CHE and the CHEA, we would like to welcome you to our CHE Career Plus. So I am Anne and I will be your host for today. And before we start our program, let us um, recognize the presence of our team. Good afternoon, Paul and Ricky Sandra. We also have the director Dr. Amy Sherry Barriot, she's at the back. And we also have members of the CHEA Board of Directors, Sir Flora Francisco, good afternoon. Sir Dr. Jen Amparo, good afternoon. Sir Ray Mark Marquez, Attorney Nico Alban, and of course, Sir Julia. And we also have Mom Pam Atlan, also a member of our group. So thank you so much all for gracing us with your presence today. Okay, so now to formally open our program, it is an honor to present to you our dear college dean, Dr. Ricardo M. Sanchez. Maraming salamat. Uh, wala akong inanda ang speech kasi bukas pa yung aking gusto mahapang-hapang speech na gagawin. But anyway, uh, maraming salamat sa inyong pagdating, lalo na sa mga alumni na nandito ngayon. Uh, uh, for uh, being here, we're uh, all the way from uh, China. We're all the way from China. We're all the way from no? As uh, and ito, of course, the way from China. We're all the way from China. We're all the way August 19, no? Uh, Nandito din si Raymar Tiplayano at sa nasa Philippine National Volunteer uh, Organization. So, kung gusto niyo mag-volunteer, anggap na takat kayo. <laughs> May swerte naman yung volunteer yung sibila. Ano naman yung ano? Pwede naman mabuhay din naman, ano? At uh, anyway, si Attorney Nico ng uh, uh, Milanco, no? Uh, uh, Maraming salamat sa mga estudyante. Ano, malapit na palang ano, hindi pala estudyante. Magiging po alumni natin yung mga yan. No? Magiging kasama na natin sa alumni no? uh, ng ating uh, Cards of Human Ecology. No? Uh, ang aking role ngayon is just to open. No? Uh, dahil, uh, and I would like to, of course, thank muna yung uh, committee or alumni and international relations ang Alumni Association at ang Humane Philippines, maganda yung nangyari sa inyong umaga. No? Uh, Napaka-insightful yung ating mga, ating mga resource persons and as I've told you, uh, ito ay bahagi sa ating pag-improve ng ating curriculum, ng ating mga programa sa College of Human Ecology. No? At uh, ngayon, ay uh, gagawin din natin ito. Uh, I think this is, this is the first time na meron tayong uh, activity na mas marami pa yata ng alumni kasi sinyante. <laughs> Sila na po orient sa Tayo po. Pero I think, uh, ano naman, i-record naman tayo, no? I-record naman natin at uh, i-share natin ito no? sa, sa, sa ating uh, site, sa ating uh, Facebook uh, Facebook page. Uh, siguro gusto ko lang din ipaalam sa mga estudyante no? at sa ating mga alumni na meron na tayong website. Ano nyo ba yun? Alam nyo na may website na tayo? Yung bagong website ng College of Human Ecology. No? Meron tayong website at meron tayong bagong dinagdala doon na mahalagang malaman ninyo na meron tayo. No? Dinagdala natin ng isang page, isang tawag doon, page, no? Ah, sa tab, no? Doon sa website na yun, ang title, ang, ang 
ang pangalan na yung opportunities. No? Kasi gusto namin, gusto namin uh, ng, uh, ng, uh, ng ating kuleyo na kahit graduate na kayo, bisita bisita pagbubisita naman kayo sa kahit sa website na lang. No? Dahil doon sa opportunities na natap, ay doon yung makikita yung mga employment opportunities. No? Uh, kaya hinihintayan ko ang uh, mga alumni din natin na kung meron kayong kailangan ng mga uh, graduates natin, ilagay din natin doon sa, sa website sa website na yun para malaman no? ng mga bagong graduates o meron palang trabaho na nang kailangan ng, uh, ng uh, graduate ng hematicology o graduate ng uh, uh, nutrition. No? So, keep on, ano, keep on visiting our website kasi doon natin, doon tayo mag-connect, doon tayo mag-connect, uh, kumbaga. Uh, regularly, no? hindi lang tayo sa Facebook. Ngayon, meron na tayong website na pwede rin yung bisitahin. At uh, ganoon din sa ating mga alumni, kung meron kayo mga alam na mga uh, opportunities, hindi lang, ano, hindi lang job opportunities, but also scholarship no? opportunities na pupost din tayo doon na uh, it is being coordinated by our uh, committee o ang alumni ng international relations. No? sa tulong ng uh, ating committee yung inform check no so um, we are we try to update that uh, every now and then no? para updated tayo meron tayong kailangan na meron mga agencies na nangailan ng mga bagong graduates o kahit na mga uh, mga mataas na posisyon ilagay natin doon para uh, we ano mag uh, update tayo kasi kung meron tayong kailangan ng trabaho o meron tayong kailangan na i-recruit no so yun ang aking gusto ng i- And this is part, no, itong ating ginagawa ngayon, this is part of uh, preparing you, no, mga bagong graduates, preparing you sa, sa real world, no, sa pagkundya trabaho na kayo. No? Uh, congratulations sa maraming mga cum laude, no, maraming mata cum laude, <laughs> at sumang ay, isang meron tayong isang sumang cum laude. Uh, just for information lang sa mga naging laude, no, uh, pag nagtrabaho kayo, pumasok kayo sa gobyerno, hindi nyo na kailangan ng civil service exam. So, level 1 na lang, sa level 1. Level 1, no? sa level 1 na, 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 na posisyon. No? So, kung baga, hindi nyo na kailangan ng exam. Kung hindi na kayo maging permanent agad, kung permanent yung item na yun. So, uh, that's good no? for, for those who are waiting uh, with the honors. Hindi namin nangyari sa amin ni Kuya Loro yun, hindi kami na... Magnanayers. Mga magnanayers. Of course, no? uh, congratulations sa lahat. And I uh, hope also to see you again tomorrow. Uh, yun ang ating, uh, ang tawag niya, yun ang ating testimonya sa ating uh, College of Human Ecology sa Copeland tayo, bukas, ang nalatotso ng umaga. And uh, ang ating graduation ay uh, UP at UY ay uh, Uh, sa ano sa August 5, no? So yung mga pagkisabi yung mga magulang no na gusto magpanood sa inyong graduation sa UPLPY ay uh, online na ba <laughs> Hindi kayo mga di mga pasok si mga parents natin sa sa ano sa sa di kayo magkakasya sa kompla, no? Pero bukas invited kayo no ang kanyang mga pati mga parents niyo invited sila to join us sa ating, sa ating sa ating co-plan no uh, mabuti nga na sa co-plan tayo dahil alam niyo may nangyari sa kabila sa diliman no inulan sila ng gusto no sa kanila ng graduation they are totally sure but uh, sa atin we are doing it uh, so sa co-plan you can bring your parents and then sa sa August fight kayo na lang muna no manood na lang sila sa sa online para sa pagkano pagka pagsaderbisyon okay ah uh, with that uh, maraming salamat sa ating komite at congratulations sa ating mga estudyante nagagraduate na at magiging kasama natin sa mga susunod na panahon sa ating bayan maraming salamat sa kanila so Bakit nagtatanong yung mga students natin, are you aware para saan itong ginagawa natin sa day <laughs> Meron bang nakakaalam? Any guess? Check career class. Baka daw kung meron gusto nang mag-hire sa kanila. Baka sir. <laughs> De, sige. So to give us the objectives of this program, no? let us welcome one of the BOD members, Atty. Nicole. Good afternoon, everyone. So, 
Ang hirap sundan pagka ganito ka guwapong uh, speaker ang uh, ano. So pagpasensyahan niyo na po, biglang ditong level baba lang sa akin. So, yeah. so thank you very much. So, uh, nakakaba pa din no? <laughs> Kasi this is one of the few uh, face-to-face ako umatin. Like, uh, even if I'm attending mga, uh, what do you call this? Uh, mga,
speakers talaga. So, I saw this post, they say, ipapositive ko lang kasi medyo negative yung naanak ko. Sabi kasi doon, kailan ka daw mag-quit? But, but I'm trying to reform, uh, to reform it na, what do you look for in a career or a job position? And they say, na dapat daw, one, you should be either learning from that company, or two, you are earning from that company, or three, both. Or, yun nga, if wala dun sa tatlo, don't go to that company, or if you're in that company, resign. Yun yung sabi. And I think that's correct, but that's just partly correct. Because I think for the graduates of the College of Human Ecology, human ecologists, whatever major you are, and nutritionists, I think may kulang na isa. And I think uh, this is very unique to our college, kulang yung to serve. Because I think the graduates of College of Human Ecology does not only look for learning, well, that's, that's very good, you need to learn. But you, don't, you just don't need to earn only. You need to find work also that, that you are actually serving. Uh, serving our country, our people. And I think yun yung core uh, value ng lahat ng graduate ng College of Human Ecology. And that's unique dito sa college natin. Whatever field that you have, uh, you, you dream of uh, coming to or becoming, like for instance, ako, I'm uh, a legal professional, uh, a little, well, even actually a little, actually normal na nga eh. I, I should norm, we should normalize that the College of Human Ecology graduates, specifically the mga human ecologists natin, can become good lawyers and actually one of the best, uh, at least in my experience, one of the best uh, undergrad uh, uh, courses for, uh, for a lawyer. Kasi sobrang ganda nung ating pagiging, uh, yung, yung, yung thinking of the human ecology perspective, a holistic approach to things, you can really apply it in law. And kahit na sabihin yung medyo malayo, you're still serving. I'm serving my clients na uh, other privilege. I still give advices to sa mga makakilala, family and friends, and to our clients in Naralco. Kaya nga, I will be the one to apologize sa UPLB kasi nagka-proud of the value the last time. Uh, Nagalit na yata si Chansey. Pero uh, yun nga, but, but uh, we, we, we did our best naman from Meralco's side. So nagka-Korean din na naman din. So yun. So uh, with that, uh, I think yun lang. I, I think I just want to leave that uh, special message to you guys that if you're looking for a job, you should not look for two things, you should look for three things. So you must be able to learn, must be able to earn, and must be able to serve. So with that, thank you very much and good, congratulations to you. Actually, it's one of the Czech missions. Now, as Czech graduates, we, you have, we have to uh, develop community programs and deliver community services for the betterment of the quality of life. So that's one of the missions of the CH. All right. So, are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Energy, no matter what, students. Natin. Are you ready? Okay, thank you so much. So for our first speaker for today, let me read his citation. Now, Mr. Bernoukas has worn many hats, including government officer, consultant, trainer, and technical assistant to various members in the private and public sector. He capped off an almost 11 years career at the Development Academy of the Philippines and served as its training manager to over a thousand government executives and middle managers in various programs of development management. With his dedication and application of acquired skills in training and project management, he was awarded as an outstanding project manager in 2016. In January 2021, he transferred to the Philippine National Volunteer Service Coordinating Agency, an attached agency of the National Economic and Development Authority, a senior volunteer service officer, and oversees the agency's monitoring and evaluation unit. He is now involved in the promotion of volunteerism as a development strategy and in mainstreaming volunteerism in local development and sector. A licensed environmental planner, Mr. 
Mr. Garrupes holds a bachelor's degree in human ecology, major in human settlements planning, and a postgraduate diploma in urban regional planning, both from UP Las Banas and UP Tinema. He is also a graduate of the Asian Productivity Organization and DOCS Development of Productivity Practitioners Program, which is an international training program on public sector productivity. So to discuss with us on how to build your community volunteer portfolio and implications to your career, let us clap our hands for Mr. Rayard Ray Beamer. Okay, thank you for your very generous introduction. And yeah, so magandang hapon. And to our live uh, Zoom viewers, no? magandang hapon. <laughs> okay, so allow me to have my laptop here because it's going to be projected by Zoom to have this recorded. Mas na is recorded. Okay, so with this, no, kanina na sabi na Tony Miko, uh, maganda yung naging, ano na, no, experience niya through his uh, career, no, as a lawyer, professional lawyer, through his entire career. So may naman, let's consider one third path. No? Let's, siguro let's check na maya while we share to you our slides. So kayo, as graduates, na, so to be graduates of human ecology and nutrition, na ako ba? Yes. So, ito bang slide ko, ay, ay di ba itong napag-isipan? Ano kaya yung mga possible na job titles after you graduate? Sa check? Pwede kayo, maaari kayo maging government employee or sa agencies, like training officer, project manager. Pwede rin sa LGs, di ba? Lari yung mga planning officers at yung municipal city nutrition uh, action officers. Pwede rin si Aka Dean, kaya ni Dean. Professor. Sir. Si Sir. <laughs> Super, ito, uh, ang ating awardee. Ang digital awardee ng ating UPLB. Pwede rin kayo maging private or NGO and some consultants, medical professionals, and the like. So, ngayon ba, ngayon ba, kayo ba ay nag-iisip na ano, di ba maging, pwede maging mangyari after the mission? Pero syempre, di ba, we always think na, paano po ba ito gagawin, di ba? Ano ba ang ating kailangan gawin? Sa ba tayo kapunta? So, ngayon, with this career mission, we'll share to you some of the possible career path that you will have to take and also to consider in terms of your individual journey as a graduate of human ecology. College. So with this, <laughs> so ngayon, sige, ating mag-isipan, ano ba ang volunteering? Ayan. So ngayon po ba, sige po rito nakapag-volunteer na? Tapos ang kamay, nakapag-volunteer na sa kanilang uh, work or journey sa lahat. Okay, I can see a hand up over there. Okay. So of course, we need to define, ano ba ang volunteering set? According to the RA 9418, or the Volunteer Act of 2007, volunteerism is defined as an act involving a wide range of activities, including forms of mutual aid. Please take note yung mga nakabul, no? That provide an enabling environment and empowering environment both on the part of the beneficiary receiving and volunteering rendering acts. Ayan. To the attainment of public good, where monetary and other incentives or rewards are not the primary motivating factors. Ayan. So we have this RNN for one eight. So surely in the national definition, we have also from United Nations volunteer definition for the term said. It stated here that volunteering are activities undertaken of free will for a general public good and where monetary reward is not the principal motivating factor. Ayan. Sabi niya ni UN from Article Resolution 1538. And of course, we need to also to check ano ba ang volunteer work. Ayon sa ating ILO, volunteer work, sabi nito, defines unpaid non-compulsory work. I repeat no, unpaid non-compulsory work that is time individuals give without pay to activities being performed. Ayan. So, Sim pala ang volunteer work, no? So, maaari, we have our own definition in mind, but at least meron tayo gaya tayo sa ating mga international and RNA for 1-8 definition. Sabihin nyo, 
scale of volunteering, ilang kaya ang nag-volunteers sa buong mundo? Sige nga po. Meron ba kayong idea? Ilan ang mga nag-volunteers sa buong mundo? Any uh, values? One, two, one. Four than a million? Ayan. According sa isang uh, uh, paper, no? globally, there are 800 million people or 15% ng entire population ng buong mundo ang nag-volunteer per month. So, and of course, meron din isang uh, source, no? Kami sa Rotary, kami pa nagbabaya. More women. Sabi, women take 50% of all volunteering globally. Then you are like that. So, walang pinipili. Walang pinipili yung gender in terms of volunteering. So, of course, given those definitions, no, we can now present to you ano ba ang core characteristics ng volunteering. First, kusa or free will. Second, kapwa or beneficial to others. And third, kapalit na bayan, hindi hangad or unpaid. Let's talk about it isa-isa. Sige. First, the activity should be undertaken voluntarily, no? According to your own free will. Ayan. So, yun yung pusa. <laughs> For seven naman karakteristik, no? Yung about sa... Uh, should be of benefit to someone, it should be recognized that volunteering brings significant benefit to the volunteer as well. Ayan. So, para may mutual volunteering na tinanda. And of course, the last, Kailangan daw should, that their voluntary activity should not be undertaken primarily for financial reward. So, yung sabihin, ang pag-volunteer natin ay kapalit na bayad, wala ka na. Or, and pay. So, yan pala ang voluntary characteristics. So, given that, given that, alam nyo ba, ng marami din types of volunteering, ayan, sa kala nyo, ang volunteering, simple lang to, meron palang different types of volunteering. First, yung formal. Ayan. Ano ba ang formal? Formal volunteering involves dyan yung meron mag-manage, may volunteer manager, may structure, may nag-supervise, and also meron mga tasks in a long run, long term, at may attendance during meetings. Ayan. Ayan yung formal volunteering. Ano naman ang non-formal volunteering? It involves, usually, uh, hindi naman siya may, may group or may, you know, pero parang meron lang siya para may mga group na mayroon shared interest to work na gusto nila mag-conduct ng volunteer activity. So, usually, yun yung mga motivations. Like, for example, no, we're not classmates. Gusto mo mag-conduct ng isang one-time uh, hipanin activity or fun activity activity. It is also called a non-formal volunteer. So, parang hindi naman isa alam mayroon mag-organize or mayroon formal volunteer input. Yan. Ano naman ang governance? Ang governance volunteering, ito yung merong mga leaders may direction ng organization. Ito yung may mga uh, may scope, may size, saka structure. Usually, ang governance volunteering, uh, meron siya ang board of trustees, like the chair, uh, association, ayan. So, merong, in terms of volunteering, uh, organization siya, where it may nag for the board or merong governing members. Ano naman ang social action? Social action, ito naman yung mga groups, social action groups, na merong interest and passion for bringing about defined changes. Yeah. For example, dito, alam niyo ba yung nangyari sa, ano, sa Taal, di ba? Merong eruption. So, may, may mga groups concerned towards to para isip yung mga na hayop sa isla. So, isa siya isa po lang social action volunteering project. Yeah. Ano naman ang project base? Ang project base naman, ito yung uh, involves frequently characterized by high levels of volunteer involvement. Tsaka meron din kailangan na certain uh, set of skills. Yeah. For example, in volunteering, in, in volunteer recruitment, yeah. meron tayong tinatawag na set of skills. So, syempre, we need to check then to assess yung mga volunteers na gusto ma-involve. For example, 
hindi naman tayo mag-recruit uh, for highly technical if prepacking lang naman, di ba? Ang kailangan for that skill. So, meron din assessment. So, it's called project-based volunteer. Di ba? Pero pala doon kung ano, uh, tax volunteering, ang kailangan natin malaman in terms of volunteering activities. So, kayo naman, let us define sino ba si volunteer. Sino ba si volunteer? Who is a volunteer? Yeah, according to our RA 9418, it will be an individual or group for resources arising from social developmental businesses and corporate orientation. Yeah. May commitment, conviction, ito. contribute, time, service, and resources. Mamaya may time to share. Ano ba ang pwede niyo mabigay ka sa volunteer? Please take note na pwede itong full-time or part-time or essential cost for a cost that is mutually meaningful and beneficial to public interest as well as to themselves. So according to our RA 941 or Voluntary Act of 2007. Yeah. Sige, as a volunteer, what can, what can you give? You can give your time. Treaties yan, treaties. Time. Pera. 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 Hindi naman siguro classmate, no? <laughs> Writing or coaching. Ayan. So, coaching on essential online applications, diba? Ito pa dahil, diba? Ang maraming mga difficulty in ano, accessing, diba? Yung mga online apps. So, we can online uh, mentoring, diba? Online coaching. Lalo yung mga Zoom applications for some of our nakakatanda sa atin. Ayan. As a treasure naman, hindi na naman siguro money, diba? Ang pwedeng ibigay natin. Of course, we can give stuff or things that we can no longer use. Yung mga pinagyumangan natin ng gamit, di ba? Mga pwede rin lumang vehicle. <laughs> pwede rin lumang uh, donation. Of course, pwede rin yung mga pag-transport. Like pandemic, ito ko si Grab Bayanihan. Pero tayo yung mga uh, public transport na group na nag-offer ng free rides sa ating mga health workers. So, please remember now, treat this time, talent, and treasure na pati mabigyan as a volunteer. So, my question is over, uh, why do people volunteer? According to the studies, no, uh, some volunteer because of their personal values. Ayan. So, yung iba, may advocacy, like environment or mental health. For some people, lalo yung mga sa, I don't know, mga faith-based, mga religious, di ba? They serve, di ba? Yung kanilang mga churches, mga groups. Yeah, so more on the personal values, but they're not volunteer. Another reason, community concerns, ayan. So yung mga, hindi naman maritas lang, so mayroong purpose. <laughs> mayroong purpose ba't sila gusto tumulong sa kanilang kapwa through volunteering? Ayan. So, pwede rin mga, sabi dito, yung mga nangatandang volunteers, usually they give back to their community. So, it's part of volunteering. So, some do volunteering, they want to enhance themselves or self-esteem enhancement. Yeah, because they want to feel better about themselves. So, they want to, to help at what? Kasi meron doon kasi, ano, kapag doon kasi, sabi nila, kapag doon kasi nag-smile ka, ay, volunteer, di ba? Masaya ka. Meron doon kasi tawag na oxytoxin. Grabe, no? Term na oxytoxin. Kapag doon nag-smile ka, meron doon ang hormone, oxytoxin, na nakatulong para makapaghanda ng stress. So, ang ating sagot, para hindi mo stress, ay through volunteering ka. Eh, parang pa ka naman sa volunteering. 
So, syempre, some wants to volunteer to understand others. So, syempre, may mga iba tayo mga kasamahan na di volunteer because they want to understand or gain their understanding about sa ibang, ano, sa ibang aspeto. Like yung mga travelers, di ba? They want to go to places, they want to, to check. So, iba doon, may mga nag-volunteer din na mga pag-share ng culture, ng ibang babansa, pag-parik ng Pilipinas, ng Pilipinas, through vlogging, di ba? Di naman sa nilasaring gawin mo, but they share their, ano, their writings, their stories about the geographic region. So, pwede pala ng volunteer through sharing. And of course, personal development. So, for those who volunteer for this reason, no? Siyempre, to meet new people, to gain new friends, Ayan. So, ganito pala ang mga volunteering uh, results by the volunteer. According to American Psychological Association. Okay. Of course, meron tayong benefits volunteering. Yeah. Yeah. So, personal, self, no? So, meron tayong uh, benefits. For example, volunteering can help you find friends, connect with community, learn new skills, and even advance your career. Yeah, so ngayon pa lang, no? Through volunteering, pwede kayong makapag-gain ng network, di ba? Makapag-gain ng new friends. At pwede nyo rin makatanungan ng future job ninyo, di ba? So yun yung mga possible sa volunteering. Sometimes, uh, it can also uh, do stress, no? Combat depression, keeps you mentally stimulated, uh, mentally active. And of course, provide a sense of purpose. So, ano ba ang sekreto para humabang ating buhay? Through? Volunteering, correct? Yeah. So, mayroon, volunteering na, sir. Of course, to have this session more, ano ba? More developmental, no? Meron din kasi, ah, community, society, social economic development, uh, benefit ng volunteering. Ayan. So, ang office namin, na PNBSA, advocates volunteerism as a development strategy. Ang lalim, no? Development strategy. Umbrella ng planning, di ba? Pwede rin siya maging planning, development planning. Ayan. So, sabi dito, according to status, no? Through volunteerism, is a strategy to achieve societal development outcomes. So, some Uh, volunteers, no? Actually, kung alam niyo po, no? Um, Sina, kami po ang nag-clear ng mga volunteers from outside the Philippines going to the Philippines. Going sa ating bansa. So, lahat ng mga projects assisted ng ating mga personal volunteers ng iba, iba, iba organizations like JICA, COICA, if you're familiar with those agencies, no? Uh, personal volunteers, fresh volunteers, they have their own ano, uh, sarili sectoral uh, ano, objective in providing volunteer activity to the Filipino people as well. Yeah, so it depends property. Yung mga projects nila enhances knowledge and skills. Some uh, national volunteers no, sa Philippines, they also help our citizens to, to build a more cohesive, safer and stronger community. Yeah, they assist. They assist the government, they assist the private, they assist the NGOs. Yeah, so with this volunteering uh, intervention. And also, it enhances social connections between and among different sectors. Ayan. So, para lang, di ba, yung manipology, nutrition, so, discipline, si volunteers, and pwede nyo natin uh, tahakin. Ayan. In terms of economic contribution to volunteering, no, uh, sa ibang bansa, meron din mga data. Accordingly, sa UK, Contribution of volunteering in the economic uh, activity contributes to one point three of their GDP. So US, sabi nila USD dollars per year, two hundred ninety-seven point five billion ang contribution ng volunteering sa US. Sa Kenya, three point six six GDP in twenty eighteen. In Australia, one point eight GDP in twenty nineteen. However, for the Philippines, don't no, miba tayo na kapag kandap ng official statistics on volunteerism. But through the PSPSEA, we already uh, informed and collaborated with the PSA, ang ating statistics authority, na may include involuntary serve right on module or questions 
is the community based monitoring system. So by 2025, the PSA will now uh, have uh, official statistics on voluntary cycle. So abangan nyo po sa CBMS na pag kayo matanong, may mga tanong doon, have you volunteered in the past 12 months? Yes or no? Yeah. So kayo po ay magiging part rin ng ating volunteering data collection. So ngayon, wala pa tayo ang data, data, but in the future, we will release to the PSC. So, but uh, why voluntary system as a development strategy? Why need to adapt it as a strategy? Of course, bilang, I don't know, uh, citizen, the government cannot do it alone, di ba? We need the support of everyone's, uh, no, uh, everyone, stakeholders, because government may not have have other resources to provide the needed public services. Ayan. Kaya tayo yung mga NGOs, private, mga participation. Ayan. So also, NGOs may better provide such services in a cost-efficient and negative manner. Ayan. Through volunteerism, no? through engagement, citizens' participation, citizens' engagement, or volunteerism, it encourages greater private sector participation in governance and development. So, anapin natin, no? From a simple activity, volunteerism, to a macro-level perspective, volunteerism ay pwedeng-pwedeng maging strategy for development. Ayan. So, my first quote po na, ayan, to end my first presentation, only life lived for others is worth living, sabi nga ni Uncle Albert Einstein. So with this, I think wala tayong oras, let me introduce to you, ano ba ang volunteerism government in the Philippines? Ano ba ang highlights ng RNN418 and our agency for your appreciation? So please watch this video. Volunteerism is a rich heritage of Filipinos that continues to give meaning in the lives of individuals, families, and communities. Volunteerism is a manifestation of the Filipino Bayanihan spirit. It is with the selfless efforts of volunteers that we find hope in the development of education, health, social services, and environment. Volunteers. <laughs> okay, let's try again to play the video. Volunteerism is a rich heritage of Filipinos that continues to give meaning in the lives of individuals, families, and communities. Volunteerism is a manifestation of the Filipino Bayanihan spirit. It is with the selfless efforts of volunteers that we find hope in the development of education, health, social services, and environment in the communities. Not all services can be provided for by our government alone. All of us need to exert extra effort in filling the gaps in the various sectors of society by volunteering. The government through the Philippine National Volunteer Service Coordinating Agency, or PNVSCA, as the lead agency, continues to recognize volunteering initiatives of Filipinos in its desire to spur national and local development with a human heart. Sige, I think we are now live, no? Hello po sa ating mga live viewers. We apologize for this technical difficulty. But with this, maybe uh, siguro entertain some questions first, no? Para we can be uh, alive and think things sa ating career orientation. Ayan. Dito po ba sa inyo mga LGUs? Ayan. I believe you know your LGUs na, you, know, you have access to the LGU services. Lahat po ba kayo nakapag-avail ng mga LGU services? Kasi kung hindi pa kayo nakapagpunta sa inyong municipio, baka hindi nyo rin nalalaman ng mga volunteering opportunity. 
activities. Kasi ayon sa ating batas, RNA Provani, uh, LGUs are mandated or required or, or encouraged also to promote, to develop their own volunteering programs. Yan. Kung baga, kung mag-volunteer na ako sa aking area, lalapit ako sa aking LGU. So, meron ba kayong access sa inyong mga LGU? Wala pa? Ayan. At ito naman puntahan ng ating mga LGU. At sila dapat ang magbibigay ng service sa ating mga citizens. Ayan. Sige? Okay lang yan. We are still, ano na tayo, uh, trying our best to bumalik sa regular programming. Kasi gaya tayo ng pandemya. Masaya tayo sa online. Bagay <laughs> tayo sa face-to-face. -face. Okay, do you have questions po? Yes, sir. So based on the Sakalina part, a something in the defining volunteer. So, basta nagbagay po ng pera, like, considered as volunteer. Basta po yun ay bukal sa kalooban na nagbigay at mayroong pupuntahan na mag-benefit yung pera nilaan. Di ba? May purpose. May purpose yun, di ba? So, yun sa volunteerism activity already. To some organizations, meron din kita ako na volunteering ang daw yung hours, di ba? Kung wala kang pagbigay, pwede kang mag-render ng service. Kaya nga sabi nga nila, time, talent, and treasure. So, hindi naman dahil time lang naman, talent, hindi treasure. Kung buka po sa loob, at walang hinihingi ka palit, that's volunteering activity already. Contribution. Okay. Siyempre, sa volunteer ito, ito sa incurred cost. Diba? Siyempre, we need to... Sa volunteer management, diba? Ibang ito, aspeto na ito. In volunteer management, meron din mga cost of volunteering. So, ibang topic na yun. Kung gusto nyo po na ganun mga modules, pwede po kami mag-share sa inyo. Pero na sa GIS, ang mga volunteers, kailangan nila, meron din manager sila, meron din mga allowances na binibigay because meron din transportation. Diba? As a volunteer manager, ayoko din na mahirapan ang aking kasama. Take note, kasama, meaning, hindi naman siya papalit sa trabaho mo. They're, all, they're only there to assist the regular activity ng inyong office or pro volunteer program. So, hindi siya employment talaga. Pero sa mga kasi, may mga tinatawag na volunteers, like you and volunteers. Yeah, so, medyo iba ang aming, ano doon, understanding dun sa mga... Uh, iba, iba sir. Pero kami konting ano lang, uh, discussion regarding sa mga ibang volunteers from outside the Philippines. But in the Philippines, since kami nga nag-clear sa kanila para makapag-enter sila sa Philippines, ayun. So may mga volunteer, volunteer organizations, search organizations, they also manage these volunteers. Meron din cost of volunteer. So sa LGUs, kaya kami na volunteer na streaming para ma-mainstream na ang volunteerism sa ating LGUs. So, doon talaga ang aming kliyente. As well as the SQCs as well. As well as. Actually, part of the UPLB eh. At ito meron tayong uh, volunteer na naka-assign sa UPLB. Hindi ko lalang kung saan. Uh, United uh, Peace Corps volunteer. Sige po, I think time check. Malapit niya ako pag-end. Any more questions po? Sige sir. Kung mismo naman lang yung social welfare or yung mga social institutions, gano'n pa po ang role yung mga volunteer organizations? Actually, sa, sa Philippines kasi, di ba? Kapag sinabing volunteer, parang ilang sektor lang ang nasa disaster, social, but na kasi ang volunteerism, cross-cutting siya. So, sa case po na talang mo, mo din gano'n kung sino nag-handle? Hindi ko, may kapis po na malakas na po yung social welfare systems nila. Mayroon ako ba yung mga volunteering organizations doon sa country type? Uh, depende po kasi yun, sir, sa ano sa pagtingin eh. Kasi kailangan naman talaga mayroong nag-handle, di ba? So, meron din duration din naman yan, yung mga ganyan. Kasi meron din cost. In terms of tanong mo na pwede na silang ma... ano, ma... umalis ba? Tama ba? Then, I think that it's useful to volunteer organizations in countries like the Philippines because there are 
para lack of government resources. So, na mas supplement sila sa... Oo. Oh. Pero in some case, kung na mataas na po yung social welfare, may role pa po po yung mga volunteer organizations. Actually, uh, eh, good question niya. Actually, hindi lang naman, actually dapat talaga inclusive ang volunteer. Hindi lang dapat sa isang uh, less developed country. Kasi meron din mga pangangailangan din naman ng ibang bansa kahit rich country na siya. Yeah, so, meron din ganong aspeto na hindi lang dapat talaga inclusive siya. Wala dapat na parang ito yung mga criteria or something. So, dapat talaga inclusive ang volunteer uh, for all. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, ano nga sa mga bansa. Ah, maski naman sa mga mayayaman na bansa, meron mga tinatawag na vulnerable sectors. Yung mga nananailangan ng tulog. Uh, hindi sapat yung uh, social welfare o yung welfare society programs nila para masuportahan yung mga nananailangan. And, on the other hand, meron din mga talagang mga tao na grupo na gusto talagang mag-input sa kapwa. So you have to create a platform for them, a venue for them to uh, exercise their uh, interest and willingness to serve. So meron pa rin, meron pa rin venue and opportunity. Yes, correct. Three. So uh, that's the that enabling environment. Saka mga example dyan yung mga voluntary organizations na may voluntary clients, klara ng iwanis. Kaya mga voluntary, kaya pa kaya voluntary sila kasi na paan gumagastos para lang mga pang-voluntary work. They spend their own money. Okay, thank you sir. Okay, any more questions po? Sir, attorney ko. Coming from, ano, yung sa explanation, sir, Flo, meron na bang, meron po bang statistics on para specific sector, as mentioned by sir, that there are specific sectors na kailangan ng volunteers. Meron po ba tayong statistics na Where, which sector are mas nakailangan talaga ng volunteers? Actually, sa mayroon kasi, uh, hindi pa talaga official na uh, mayroon pa tayo. Mayroon talaga ang uh, statistics na ito volunteer. Kasi yung kaming dirt on data sa volunteer system. Kaya ang office talaga namin is nag-ipag-partner sa PSA to include yung mga volunteering right and questions, yung mga volunteering related questions pag-gather ng data pa sa ating mga official instruments. So, doon pala nag-start talaga yung pag-collect. In terms of uh, sector, ha, med medyo ano eh, inclusive talaga yung approach ngayon. So, dapat walang wala dapat na ano yung doon lang pwede mag-volunteer. In terms of placement. Although, may mga considerations sa mga Uh, trust organizations, yung mga kung sila, may mga dapat malapit lang sa airport, business security, yeah, may mga ganong considerations. Although, for the past uh, two years ko sa office, and is new to the office, medyo limited din yung, ano, yung term geographic uh, assignment or placement ng mga tagalabas upon ang Pilipinas. Okay. So in terms of, I don't know, sa ating mga opportunities, please uh, visit your LGUs po to check the available and voluntary opportunities. Yeah. So yun po aming minaman uh, promote the LGUs to promote and to develop on voluntary programs. Aside from LGUs, but it will be mga uh, institutions like academia, etc. Okay, any more before I end my presentation? No, 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 slide, no, no. Ako may isa-share. Sige, sir. Uh, para sa mga gra graduate, duly graduates, yan, sa kain ko sa Opportunity din yan kung halimbawa, uh, wala pa kayong makuha ang trabaho na agad, pwede kayong mag-volunteer as an entry point sa isang uh, organization or institution. Kasi may mga may mga organizations, may mga kumpanya na kung meron silang uh, CSO program, no? uh, pwede kayo mag-volunteer doon para tumulong doon sa kanilang mga CSO program para makilala kayo na meron kayong skill na pwede i-offer. And if you serve well and do good, mapapansin kayo ng mga, mga 
mga bossing at saka may hari. And it will, you create the opportunity for you to be employed without really trying. Actually, rather, maging active kayong member ng ating, ano, Chia, ha? Chia, ha? Alam pa ko naman, Chia, ha? Hindi mo alam na makagay na kayo network with our alumni. So, doon pala, pwede na. Isa na ang avenue for us. Di ba, Doc Jen? So, abangan nyo po ang aming next meetings. Sige po. Thank you very much po for listening. And, buhay na po. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Raymar. So, ang key takeaway po natin sa talk ni Sir Raymar are, Aside from, di ba, you are doing volunteering, you are not doing only your social responsibility, but you are also slowly building your career portfolio. Because by volunteering, you are um, having you are having opportunities to meet new people, to have new connections, and you can also develop some skills, especially interpersonal skills that can, you can use to build your resume. No? And of course, at some point, if you are doing long volunteer visit, then at some point, baka doon yung makita kung ano talaga yung gusto ninyong puntahan. What will be your career goal? Right? So, I hope um, you had, uh, kumbaga na ignite yung inyong passion to do volunteer visit. So with that, let's have our next speaker. Mr. Brian Carlo Hipolito. So, Mr. Brian Carlo Hipolito is an alumnus of the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. He is a graduate of BS Human Ecology, major in HSP, and Master of Science in Development Management and Governance, major in Organizational and Institutional Development. He is a human resources professional managing global talents for international organizations for more than 10 years. So he is currently affiliated at the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank or AIIB based on Beijing, China. Wow. From China pa si sir. Tama na sir, galing pa ko si Ch sa China ang ating speaker for today. So as human resources officer. And prior to AIIB, he also served as HR at the United Nations Green Climate Fund based in Incheon, South Korea and at the, at the International Rice Research Institute in Los Banos, Laguna. Mr. Hippolito is also our CHE 2022 Distinguished Alumnus Awardee for Organizational Development and Public Service. So to talk on building your resume and your confidence for the interview, let us clap our hands for Mr. Brian Hippolito. Right? Makulimlim na ang hali no? sa inyong lahat. I hope hindi pa tayo hinahat na ang weather na ito sa kapihiga. Ang no? kapihiga sa, sa, sa kama. So magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Uh, also to those who are listening online. Now in this uh, discussion, now all of you are ready to, to join the workforce. Ang may isang pinaka-importante document na kailangan ninyo pagtuunan talaga ng effort at ng pansin kasi itong importante document na to will dictate the path of your careers for for decades and this will this document also is is a strong appraisal tool by just looking at someone's resume you can actually appraise how much someone is earning per month or even per year so it's a very important tool not only for uh, applying for jobs but also to sell yourself you're, you're selling your talents you're selling your experiences you're selling your background now in, in, in very quick 20-25 minutes uh, I'll give you really useful tips, very practical ones that you can apply in your respective resumes. Again, this is fed to fresh graduates. You know, when we talk about mid-career professionals, of course, it's a different set of considerations than even experienced professionals. 
So for this one, we'll, we'll discuss about a regime that, that would work perfectly in your, uh, in your applications. So why is it? Ah, okay. Okay. Sige, okay. That's, ano naman, alam. Uh, na, na <laughs> Thank you. So you know, uh, uh, I'll give you certain, uh, certain tips on writing your CV and then also attending your job interviews. Uh, first, on your CV, just write the simplest, uh, like use the simplest templates. Especially nowadays, na ang CVs ay nire require submit online. If you're asked to submit a CV in an online application portal, Especially in big organizations, we have what we call applicant tracking systems. Now it's getting more and more sophisticated. By using a very simple template, you're uh, assuring yourself that all the relevant keywords, all the relevant details that you're putting into that document will be read properly by whatever system it is. Especially, but organizations, it, it's not even humans who would actually read your resume on the very onset. You have big organizations where they receive hundreds or even thousands of applications. For example, the Asian Development Bank Young Professional Program, each year they would receive eight to 10,000 CVs uh, per round. So it, it's not either, it's impossible for them to read all of those. What they would do is they would have a very sophisticated applicant tracking software that's very popular in the market. It would look for certain keywords. If you're applying for a particular position, your clue, uh, all of your clues will be found in the job description. No? So you don't want these keywords to be distorted by the shapes, by the different colors that you would put in your, your resume because it's not going pick up ng maayos ng system it can actually uh, lessen your chances of, of, of getting points into that uh, keyword matching technology. No? So one example of a, of a uh, uh, format that we have would be, uh, maybe I can borrow the, uh, no, 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 yes, okay. So, um, oh, okay. yes, uh, it's <laughs> Ariel, no. Ah, sorry, back page, no. Do you have previous page, no? Uh, yes, okay, no. So, ah, uh, sige, okay, no, okay, ito rin na lang. <laughs> so, ideally, let's talk about content later, no. But template-wise, just go with the simplest template, like this one. Uh, ang, ang, ang danger on, on templates like this, if you would submit it on different formats and it will be read by system, sometimes they distort the shapes and colors you, you, ano eh, yung, yung, yung keywords and that uh, lessens the, the, the chances of any software to read your, your details correctly. So as uh, simple as it is, just get the most boring template that will guarantee you uh, all of your relevant keywords, uh, keywords will be read. No? Uh, next slide, sorry. Yeah, next slide. Okay, thank you. Now, um, just on the back end, just to visualize what's happening in, on, on the back end after we applied and submitted your application, your CVs will be read by this, uh, just like this by the software. Oh, sorry. <laughs> ah, okay, yes. Ayun, ano na tayo, yes. Ayan. So, this is your submitted CV. Usually what softwares would do is it would extract relevant keywords, uh, education background, it would systematically uh, export all of those details. And what it does is, you know, with the advent of AI technologies and, and, and technology, you would be able to rank automatically by the click of few, uh, by the wonders of, you know, few clicks uh, bottom of a software, you'll be able to rank your candidates based on the relevancy of content and keywords inside the resume. Now let's talk about content later. So we were just talking about template at uh, the very onset. So that's for the template. We want to assure 
that the systems will read your resume properly. Now, let's talk about content, right? The whole application process is an impression management game. From the moment that you apply, uh, from the moment that you submit your CV, you show up on interviews, it's all impression management. So you really need to systematically package details of your background on paper and in person. In person, during interviews, on paper, submitting your CV. Remember, that's the first document will be asked from you by major companies. A lot, uh, a, a lot of companies nowadays don't even ask for any document. They will only ask for one or two documents. That's your CV or resume, the, the terminology center changes, and then another one is cover letter. So it's very important. That's your only chance to get that first impression correct by giving the employer what they want to see. Okay? Ngayon, ang problema ko sa maraming fresh graduates, reviewing CVs for, for more than 10 years, nangihinaya pa ko, no? na ang ganda-ganda ng program, ang ganda-ganda ng thesis, ang ganda-ganda ng mga coursework mo. Pero what they do, let's say, let's, let, we will go chop by chop, uh, uh, chop, chop, chop by part. For example, on the education part, they will just end up listing things. Ay, ano ba ito? Parang gusto nyo kung magkubro na lang ng kwerte. Parang gusto nyo naglilista na lang. Lilista na lang nila saan sila nag-aaral, kailan, that's it, saan. Lilista na nila saan sila nag-internship, kailan, saan. Na Nag-e-end lang ito, no? The greatest tip on powerful resumes, you provide context. Alright? Context that's important on your viewers. Your viewers are hiring managers. You're applying for a particular position. You give them context of that education. So if you're applying, for example, for a, for a planning position or for a nutrition position or community development position, don't end listing you graduated sa UPLB. Most, most people would just list na graduate sa UPLB, ito course, ito year, that's it, right? Give context, especially a lot, of, a lot of courses nowadays are a fusion of different things, diba? And, and we do offer different kinds of that, even in human ecology. So, aside from listing your basic information, just include one to two sentences what human ecology is all about. Ibigay niyo na yun sa kanila, diba? Bite size, huwag niyo naman i-over dun yung isang chop ng parang. So don't bore your viewer, diba? Which is the hiring manager. Give them one sentence description of what human ecology is all about. And you know you're applying for, let's say you're applying for a mapping position. You want to do GIS, no? You've spent four, five, six years in university taking several courses. Highlight your relevant courses pertaining to mapping because that's what they're interested in hiring. Right? Huwag yun naman i-over. Do may nakakita naman yan na i-over din na Talagang lahat na ng course nilista talaga just to fill the spaces. Just highlight, you know, four to six relevant courses. What does this tell your, your future boss or your hiring manager? Hey, I've taken that in college. I have the theoretical background. I'm applying to your team, to your company today, so that I can put it into practice. Pero oh, ah, nag nagka-practical experience na ako yan, ayan no? Meron na mga subjects. And then, during your interview, your, your, the hiring manager would ask you to explain further ano yung tools na ginamit mo, ano yung mga methodologies na pinagawa sa inyo during those course. So, diba? You provide more context, you provide more flavor into that education, especially your final requirement, no? your field work. Eh, that's your first baby, diba? Thesis, field work. He exerted a lot of effort on that, then if it's very relevant to the target position na inapayama, then, then put it, no? Uh, then, uh, another segment would be internship and affiliations. So, affiliations, very straightforward naman yan. Of affiliations, organizations that you've been part of, 
what does it tell potential employers is that you, you didn't only spend your time studying, but you also did you know, social, cultural, and other work within the community. You have leadership positions, so that gives them an idea of your leadership potential. So very fast and easy. Now on internship, um, the sample of internship and, and, and how you could package it, it goes uh, the same lines of doing volunteer work, it goes the same line of your first work, uh, first job experience. Instead of copying and pasting your responsibilities, a lot of people very lazy. Tipignan lang nila yung responsibilities, job responsibilities dun sa job app, kung saan sila nag-apply. Kakapin nila yung paste nila sa CV. That's it, no? I mean, it, it doesn't add value, eh. Maganda in packaging your internship or kunyari meron na kayong first job experience, focus on outputs. Out of that six months in inter internship, out of that two years you have spent in that organization, no? What, what are the critical achievements or major outputs or major projects that you have made? Because again, who's the audience? The audience would be a senior professional of the field that you're trying to penetrate. So you don't lecture them how you do things because alam na nila yan. You tell them what you actually achieve in your internship, in your volunteer experiences, in your actual work, full-time experiences. Okay, that would make more value to them. Ah, in a span of one year, na deliver niya to. Oh, nakapag naging part siya ng ganito project. Oh, nakapag publish sila ng X number of papers. Oh, nakapag present sila ng X number of conferences. Focus on outputs. Okay. Again, don't you know, don't give them. Uh, don't give them a lecture on how you, you do things. Give them a give them an idea, give them a context of what you've accomplished. So you know, ito, very, ano lang, very sample, uh, and some examples of, of how you provide context. No? So you highlight, you use numbers to describe your impact. So I can skip that. Uh, listening skills, uh, be very particular on skills though. No? Even as a fresh grad, you guys have acquired hard skills na, no? Uh, not only in skills, but uh, you can also mention some tools or methodologies that you've done. In Nutri, in SDS, in HFDS, in HSP, diba? And you actually use those, let's say, tools, let's say, ArcGIS, or in Nutrition, you have different methodologies of assessing, diba? An individual in terms of of their overall, overall well-being, mention all of those. Kasi alam niya naman siya na practice niya siya sa practical, right? Next one would be training and conferences. Ito talaga, no? Hitik na hitik talaga, no? lalo na ng pandemic. I uh, would see resumes na talaga minsan magde-dedicate ng one whole page, no? For, for trainings and conferences. Now, disclaimer, no? if you're applying, maybe may, may ibang segment ng workforce, for example, government, or in the academic meron. Let's say, pag sa government, academic, I think they really want full enumeration of all of those trainings and conferences kasi point system, eh, di ba? For every training or for every publication, you will be given a point if you're a major uh, contributor or co-author, ka may may point. So, Go with that, but 95% of jobs in the market, private sector, NGO, international orgs, be laser focused. Okay, be strategic. You've done 20 trainings and a dozen of conferences. You're applying to what position? Again, go back to the central question. What position are you applying for? Let's say you're, again, going back, you're applying, let's say, as, as an example, a mapping analyst. Okay? So, out of those dozens of trainings you have attended, pick two or three na talagang pag pinakita mo sa CV, on that one page, max two page CV, would really define that you're really technical, technically capable of that, on that subject. Okay? Again, okay you stop listing trainings. Provide context. For example, if, if, if you've had 20 trainings conferences, the most meaningful two or three, List that, 
and then provide maybe one to two sentences. What was the training all about? What was the specific tool that was the focus of that training or conference? No? So again, context really would separate you from the rest of your peers. Okay? And when you have drafted your CV, make sure you don't show it to anyone. I mean, you just don't know, right? Treat it just like your underwear. No one would ever see your 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 drafted CV because the, the least thing that you want to happen is that you have shared no patingin di ba you should pagdraft yun no patingin na lang kapag draft na lang kasi and then sa dulo no kayo pa rin mag-apply of the same company or the same you know, industry so di ba it, it won't take you one day one one sitting to finish a CV so you know make sure you you keep confidentiality of that document as well. And then, yeah, those are very basic practical tips on CV. Now let's go to cover letters. Okay? First two sentences, you know a cover letter that's not tailored. You just keep reading. Okay? Uh, alam naman na mga bumabasa rin. Alam naman namin yan eh, as, as main consumers of these documents. If it's not really tailored for a particular company, for a particular position. What's the key on good cover letters? na gusto nyo basahin talaga from top to bottom, make it tailored to that particular position and to that particular organization. And let your personality shine. All the things that you cannot share on the specific uh, resume or CV, put it in your cover letter. Share to that document how you've been following that company, how you've, you, how you've been using their products or services. No? Uh, or if you're following their social media network, looking at their activities, you can actually mention that on the cover letter. What does that, what, what message would that send to your potential employer? It would send a message that you're genuinely interested to be part of that team. You're genuinely interested in done your research to be part of that team, that uh, company, uh, for that specific position. No? So, for example, di ko, di ba? Um, you, you have seen it on social media, you've seen their website. Uh, I've, 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 you don't have, actually, cover letters these days, you don't have to be too formal as well. Right? Let, again, give them an idea of, of your personality. No? Uh, again, use numbers to quantify impact, um, and then seamlessly transition on, on, on how on uh, how you would actually uh, add value. Alright, so yeah, that's the quick message on that. So yeah, for yeah, for, for CV again the main message, context. Okay? You separate yourself from others by giving context. So now just very few tips to cap off on the interviews. because uh, I, I have a big bonus as well that I would give you uh, on negotiations later. So yeah. For the first 20 seconds, just give a genuine smile and just state the name of your interviewer. Very simple, but it creates uh, it creates a good start to that interviewing process. Because a lot of people nowadays, like, the interviewer will introduce themselves. The candidate siguro sobrang kabaw, kaya sobrang preoccupied ng isip, gusto gusto talaga makapas. Kung talaga na may mental block. Uh, by just by just mentioning the name of who's in front of you and you know giving them a uh, a good smile, is that sending a good uh, uh, psychological signal that uh, you're there, you're present, you actually picked up someone's name. No, uh, very simple. And then what's the magic for step next? Do it in in your all interviews that you'll get good attention for the first five minutes. No, insert the interviewer's name. And then just start your opening speech, your opening introduction with this. Name, pause. I'm so excited to be here because. Right? So with that, uh, and then you fill in the blank. Why are you excited to be in that interview? Okay? So that first sentence, that first 30 second, 60 second pitch should be all about why are you there in the why are you there in the first place? Why do you want that job? Why are you actually excited to be part of that team? 
Yeah. Using a person's name spikes their attention. Um, expressing interest is very powerful. And even though they've asked you to share about yourself, you're actually pivoting back to the company, to the role, why you're actually interested to be, to be part of them. No? And then, yeah, it shows you, you have done your research about them. I mean, for, for, for interviews, like, usually, we, we would usually have, I mean, job interview tips is best practice, you know, on all mock interviews, so not, not just like this, but, but usually tag a friend, research some popular interview questions, and the, the best tip that you can get of all the tips you can, you can research online is to practice. Don't practice it uh, on top of your head, because iba yung, iba yung practice you sa head versus pra practice with a tongue. Because if you have a lot of interview room, you can see that you can see that you can see yung you can see that 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 you can para that you can see 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 that you can so hitting back the ball means uh, they ask you a question. It's an interview so is, is, is a conversation. If, if they ask you a question, you can answer that question. Then you can actually return the question. For example, they, they will ask you what do you do typically in a day, etc. Then you would answer based from your previous internship or practical. And then you can actually return back, oh, we actually use Outlook, etc. In my previous company, like what, what tools are you guys actually are using here, etc. So that I know if I'm not, I'll be able to uh, be uh, to equip myself in advance, etc. So you just sit back the ball. Basically, what's been asked of you, you can you can ask back. And then be ready for common uh, interview quick, uh, quick question. You know, if they ask you about expected salary upfront, uh, you know, you'll be uh, caught off guard. You don't want to give a number right away, no? Because you want to see the whole picture of the package. What you can usually say is that if you don't want to put up a number, because hindi mo alam full-time ba to, papadala pa sa Cebu, sa BGC ba to, you want to get more details, no? You can, you can use, you can answer by not answering. How to answer by not answering? You can just say, of course I want to get paid fair market value, but for me to answer that question, I need to see the whole picture. The opportunity to learn, the people I get to work with, what's the working condition, are we going to be hybrid, are we going to be full face-to-face, -face? because you need to compute for your operational expenses as well, do you need to commute, how much commute time will you rent, so very trick question siya kasi pwede nilang ibalik sa'yo, no, sabi mo nung interview, take expected salary mo. Then, tsaka nila nila nilatag sa yung terms, medyo talo ka pala. No? So you don't want to be the first one to give them a number. So, yun, no? And with that, to close, uh, very quickly, just a few tips on, on how you negotiate your pay. A lot of people, especially fresh graduates, are so shy of negotiating when in fact you actually should negotiate. And sabi nga na there are two ways to get 10,000 instantly by simply asking. Okay, number one, rob a bank. <laughs> Ask them 10,000, they'll give you 10,000. Or number two, negotiate a job offer, right? Because actually, I'll give you a little secret uh, within, within the HR profession. Usually, first offers are actually discounted. The, the usual discount is around 5 to 15 percent, but it depends on the industry, especially in banking industry. Mas malaki pa kasi they would expect people to negotiate, they won't expect someone to just sign it upon first offer. Right? With that information in mind, if you're successful in a particular interview, the first number that's being put in front of you that's not the real value of the position. Try to negotiate, okay? Now, I'll give you different tips on how to increase that number. Oh, but first, you really need to know what you want before you enter a negotiation discussion. 
What do you actually want? Do you want more money? Do you want more flexibility? Do you want more free time? Diba? It's not all about just money eh, that you can negotiate. You can negotiate terms. Okay, I'll, I'll take this but I'll only report to office twice a week. Or I get additional vacation leave credits because you cannot increase my base salary. There are different avenues where you can negotiate, especially these days for uh, post-pandemic world. So then let me give you smooth negotiation techniques. So I'll give you three or four. Number one, apply to multiple positions. Okay, if you have applied to multiple positions, then higher chances you get multiple offers. When you're being interviewed, it's not actually uh, a wrong notion to tell your interviewees that you're actually actively seeking positions in the market. I mean, why not, right? I mean, tell them that you have applied to several positions as well, and then by the time that you're being offered, diba, you get multiple offers, but you can actually also do, uh, I've seen a lot of people do this as well. Of course, it depends on your confidence, on your skill set, and what you can bring to the table. No? Pero, you could enter the world of auction, diba? You can just say, oh, okay, uh, this is uh, this is appreciated, you wanted to offer me this position. Actually, I received another offer from another organization. And, you know, since you're actually my first choice, if, if we're able to match that other offer, I'm, I'm willing to actually sign your, your offer. So, diba? Enter the world of auctions. Just tell that, just tell each recruiter how much each other company is actually offering and then, you know, let them compete by themselves. It happens, no? especially when you get more experience later in your field. Another approach would be, yeah, tag price approach. Tag price approach, you just, um, you just give psychological safety on the part of your employer, like, okay, if we can do this number, we have a deal. Like, you're assuring them that on a particular number, you're gonna sign a particular offer. So, okay, with that, dapat alam mo na kung ano talaga yung, yung, yung number na you're looking at, no? So, so, that one, very straightforward. This is my rate. If we can do this, then, Give me the contract, let's, let's sign that job offer. Another technique is anchoring, no? Ano yan? Uso yan sa malls, no? Nabubudol tayo ng mga sales. So anchoring is basically, it's a cognitive bias, no? We rely heavily on the first number that's given to us. So for example, uh, how do we do it in practice? For example, your goal is 75,000. That's your goal number. So what you do in the negotiation table is you ask, 95. Just ask. Right? Ask, a, ask a higher number from your target. And then, of course, your recruiter or your HR officer would negotiate to go in between. Diba? O sige, mag-deep tayo somewhere in between. Or talagang focus na. Hindi, mali mo mag-end up ka pa ng 80. In the end, diba? Because, because you anchored it higher at the very beginning, then you're able to uh, achieve the target number, maybe even higher but So, so you know, uh, that's you know, three quick tips on, on how you can negotiate. And of course, very important, no? uh, attorney Nico would agree with us. <laughs> Ask everything in writing. No? Once all the terms have been agreed, uh, don't resign right away, don't commit right away. Ask it in paper, in a contract, and sign it before you leave your current engagements. Kasi napaka-importante niya, no? Meron kayo ang haahawakan na legal document. And yeah, with that, since, you know, with, we're, we're, we are in the uh, uh, career uh, you know, orientation as well, I mean, uh, I know a lot of you are graduating, uh, joining workforce very soon, uh, magpa-plug na lang rin ako. Uh, we, we, we actually hire young talents in the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. We just need a bachelor's degree and a minimum of two years of work experience in your particular area. And I was so excited that we will actually launch an environment and social development program. We're gonna have an in-house training within the bank. And if you're hired by the AIM, you're gonna be based in Beijing. We're gonna give, by just signing the offer,
offer, we're going to give you 25,000 US dollars to set up your life in Beijing. You're going to be given uh, uh, salary in US dollars, tax free in China, tax free in Philippines, and you'll be given a diplomatic visa in, in Beijing. It's going to be an exposure mentorship program on doing infrastructure projects in Asia while you're contributing on the environment and social due diligence work of, of those projects. So yeah, I hope we would be able to get, we actually hired someone from uh, Czech just last year. Uh, she's like 25 years old. She's part of the environment and social team. So we wanted to create a specific program for young talents so that you, know, you, you can go international as early as 25. 24 years old. So, yeah, with that, yeah, we, we hope you could join us. Uh, I would end my presentation <laughs> sending me. I, 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 I just have a 60 second uh, clip uh, we, we, that you hope you know you can consider. We will open it in December. So, I'll ask our CHAA to actually help us communicate the, the program. We do hope to be able to get. Uh, some hires from the human College of Human Ecology. <laughs> we have an internship program as well. And it, you better get paid, paid internship, so... Okay. Okay. Thank you. Just a glimpse of uh, the work environment and our people. There are no paid actors, they're actual staff.
Mamaya, hindi nyo alam kung yung print yun or hindi or titignan lang sa laptop. Kung titignan lang sa laptop, eh, then good, no? Pero kung i-print, eh, hindi yung panit lang ng, ng dating. No? Actually, yung pwede nyo gawin, gawin, ngayon na uso na wala, wala lang picture sa CVs, pero create a LinkedIn account and then paste your LinkedIn profile na abbreviation of your of your name. If they're interested to, you know, to see your face, they could just click, uh, click click that link and then they can see your face. So, kesa sayang pa yung space no, sa, sa CV. Then, sa address, okay, make sure you have professional email address. And then sa home address itself, you don't have to put in there your blog, blog. They just need to know where you are actually. Even companies in the Philippines, you just put barangay, sa city, sa municipality, that's it. Kasi yung data privacy din, no? hindi nyo alam where it would end up. And then don't even bother putting character references. Honestly, unless they ask for those information, it's just a waste of space. And you're actually giving away information, personal information, contact information of your professors. Kaya minsan yung mga prof, di ba nagugulo, ala, sino itong tumatawag sa akin? Di ba? So, if you're hired naman, before you're even hired to that position, they will ask for those details naman eh. Para then you can give heads a uh, proper respect to your professors or previous bosses na a boss, someone will call you, I've given you, okay na ba, I can give you as a referee. Uh, so yun na. So don't waste uh, your, your, your CV space for those details. Unless, sabihin nila, oh, provide three referees or five referees. Then, okay, uh, if not, forget. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Brian. Oh, yeah, ha. Kung magalagay nito yung pictures sa Linkin, huwag naman yung walking. Huwag yung mga nakagalap with your partners na mga nakakulit pa. Formal ayos sa Linkin. Okay? So, thank you so much, Sir Ryan. So, for our next speaker, uh, let's have our next speaker is Miss Maria Luis Corina Ann Chavez, also known as Corina Chavez. She is a junior unit manager of Crew Life UK, a social entrepreneur, researcher, and development worker. She has obtained her degree in human ecology, major in social technology, and her journey in the field of wealth creation, management, and preservation started with a TICHA initiative, a non-government organization. Her three-year experience in migration and development work as a program development officer was her training ground in money and business management. At age 24, she spearheaded opening two social enterprises in Iloilo Ilo and Ilo. Karina's recent engagement as program manager at Real Grow Philippines for the Innovative for Social Impact Partnership, UNDP program, and training and development consultant at Foundation for a Sustainable Society Incorporated, where she will be working with 20 women-led, impact-driven enterprises from different regions in the country. So currently, Karina has continued her journey in the finance and insurance industry as a financial consultant in Rural Life UK, leading her own team of young-driven professionals and is championing for personal finance and sustainability through financial literacy and wealth conservation. So to give us, and joining us on Zoom right now, so to give us some tips on how to build your finances, let us welcome Ms. Karina Ann Chavez. Hello, good afternoon, sound check. Can you hear me, Paul? Please give me a thumbs up since nakaharap na po sa audience, if you can hear me. Ayan. Thank you, thank you for giving the thumbs up. Uh, reaction. <laughs> and hello? Okay. So, first and foremost, po, uh, thank you to Chea uh, and Gina Prof. Uh, Jen for inviting me again to sa ating uh, career plus orientation for uh, graduating students. Uh, apologies po, I can't be physically with you. Because right now, nasa Davao po ako. Tonight pa po yung flight ko pa uwi sa Manila. Yeah, so, parang mahirap yung topic na nabigay sa akin. No? Firming, one, uh, firming up one's financial position. So, nag-reflect ako. Am I in the ano, position na to give this kind of sharing? And I think uh, I'm in the position na naman no, to share my little experience. I know, uh, yan si Sir Brian, si Kuya Raymart, and other speakers 
with me and of course our professors no have done a uh, very well in terms of finances and i still remember my ano my my days nung fre, ano fresh graduate or graduating ako fourth year student sabi ko paano kaya yung mama no paano kaya ako kikita ng pera to help myself and my family and other people will i be earning enough and how will i use that money to um to sustain yan yung mga kailangan ko so kanina i was uh, listening to sir brian's uh, talk no about the ratio maybe also had that topic before pero yung kay kuya brian sobrang parang kung narinig ko yan before siguro i landed um I landed on my first job, on my first interview again. Ayan. So, ayan na, no? So, dinagdagan ko yung uh, binigay sa aking title ni na Prof. Jen, no? Firming up one's financial position. But how did I earn my first million? Ayan. So, sa mga fresh, uh, soon-to-be graduates or graduating, no? I hope na, na ano nyo din, na imagine nyo din yung sarili nyo to have your first million soon. Ayan. So, uh, hindi ko lang po makita yung screen, but naka-flash po ba yung screen? <laughs> yeah, isa lang kasi yung aking device. Yeah. Kita po ba yung dalawang screen? Ayan. Or can I, ano po, can I share my screen? Since I only brought my, ano po, brought my iPad dito. Okay, sige po. Ayan, sabihin ko na lang po next. Yeah, so thank you. A uh, little background about myself. I was just like you guys sitting jan sa upuan na yan before. No, so I'm a proud uh, Oikan. Shout out sa Oikan jan. Uh, batch 2010, and I've always been a proud human ecologist. Ano matita? So alam naman natin. No, sabi nga ni Kuya Brian, mahirap explain ano ba yung human eco. So I also had that struggle before and. Naisip ko, saan bang linya ako pupunta? Ayan, batchmate ko si Ma'am Sandra. <laughs> Shout out sa mga 2010. <laughs> Ayan. So, yan yung little background ko. No? I was not a, a student. Ayan, mga laude, laude dyan, no Pero, I can say that I'm just an average student na I want to always give my best and do well in whatever profession I will be in the future. So, yun lang yung mindset ko when I graduated. Uh, kasi nga, sabi nga sa likod natin, sa t-shirt namin before, you know, parang it's time for human ecology to, uh, parang, uh, ano, nakalimutan ko yung exact quote, pero alam yan ni Prof. Sandra. So, I want na yung human ecology is makilala din outside the industry. Yan. So, next, ano po, ni, next slide. Yan. So, sa totoo lang, guys, I hated numbers. Mat 14, Mat 11, Econ 11, and baka hindi na yun yung mga course title. Pero Stat 1, hindi ako magaling sa Mat. No? Pero, isa, I know everyone would agree, we love to earn money. Yeah. So, pag lumabas kasi tayo sa college, ba? we need to earn money. Hindi siya pwedeng puro purpose lang or charity. Kasi tayo pwedeng we can live end-to-end, um, -end, but our family, do they deserve that kind of life, no? So I when I graduated I want na yung profession ko should be balancing income and purpose. So medyo struggle siya. Ayan. Kasi minsan yung purpose mataas pero yung income medyo so konti lang or mataas yung income pero yung purpose ta cool. Purpose search for balancing income and purpose. Yeah, next slide po. So, um, as brief background ng aking work, uh, I traveled the Philippines no, to look for uh, opportunities, investment opportunities for OFWs. So, ang uh, trabaho ko is more of uh, working with NGOs. Here on the left, mukha lang pasyal-pasyal, pero it's always about work. Yeah. So, yung three pictures dyan naman, it's my uh, experience of setting up a business with OFWs. Ito namang... Nasa likod ko yung maraming, maraming bata sa likod. Uh, I started off my training and development career with a TICHA. Doon din ang mulat yung isipan ko about finances. Yeah. So, and lastly, um, 
aside from training and development, naisip ko nun, ah, gusto kong magnegosyo. Pero, kulang yung puhunan ko. Ano kaya yung pwede kong gawin para makapagtayo ka ng negosyo with minimal capital? Ayan. So, dahil kulang pa yung capital ko before, no, I used my, ano, ah, uh, my skills. Ayan. Yun lang yung may offer ko kasi noon. Ayan. So, I started my social entrepreneurship journey ayan, when I was 23 years old. So, I worked for NGOs na yun yung linya. So, yung lower left, kung makikita nyo dyan, that's uh, the late Gina Lopez. Ayan. So, is, yung isang project niya before she ayan, before siya namatay, no? yung project niya na G Diaries or I Love, Quest for Love, yun yung hinawakan ko na, ano, na project with her. So, uh, I've worked with communities, with uh, NGOs, with a- government agencies, and lastly, na, na-experience ko din to work with ayan, yung mga elite or mga philanthropist. O, so, I can say lang na sobrang pure talaga ng intentions nila when they have ayan, all the resources. Ayan, when they have all the resources, mararamdaman mo talaga na they just want to give back to the community. And kaya siguro sila bless din ni Lord. Kasi um, that's their ano, their intention to be a blessing to others. Yeah, so next po. So I've always worked with uh women, very inspiring uh women bo, yeah, woman mga boss madam. <laughs> mga boss madam. Okay, so I'd like to share with you dahil ito nga no, firming up one's finances. I'd like to share with you itong slide na to. And it's part of a book ni Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Okay, so, for fresh graduates, I wish I'd read this book before graduating. So, ito yung cash flow quadrant. O, sabi ni Robert Kiyosaki, ito daw yung kanyang secret kung bakit siya naging ayang, wealthy. No? Wealthy not only in terms of income, but also in terms of time. So, so we all started out, out as an employee. Ito sa upper left quadrant. Ayan, may stock po dito. Ayan, so, we all started as an employee. No, pero ang goal daw dapat natin is to gain time freedom. Ayan, to gain more time and enjoy time. No? Uh, we should be able to practice these quadrants or be in these quadrants. No? So, we started as employee, fresh graduate, di ba, hanap ng work. Or, yan, hanap ng work, pag medyo ayaw na sa work, yan, nangangarap tayong maging self-employee or self-employed. Yan, kinuha ko lang <laughs> sa Canva. Eh. So, self-employed well, tayong boss. Diba? So, later, yung next speaker ko, I think, or the speaker before uh, after me, we will share her journey then. Ayan. Kung paano kami naging self-employed. Ayan. Then to becoming a business owner and lastly, an investor. So ano bang pinagkaiba lang ng mga to, no? Uh, as an employee, we work for money. But as an investor, no, the money works for us. So nung binasa ko yung book na yun, it took me ma three weeks to finish a <laughs> manipis na book. Kasi hindi ako mahilig magbasa. Pero finors ko yung sarili ko. Sabi ko, pa, ano ba yung laman nitong book na to? Bakit sobrang sikat niya? Sa TikTok, sa YouTube, and sa Facebook. Yan. Pag nag-search kayo ng financial quotes, parang uh, it's a zero Ayan. So, next po. So, I tried applying this cash flow, cash flow quadrant in my life. Ayan. Next slide po. So, how did I apply it, no? So, habi ko, kaya ko ba? I think, kakayanin ko naman. Ayan. So, as an employee, ayan, I work with government, uh, NGOs, at Ikabayan Academy, self-employed, just last year, dahil medyo nababagalan ako sa progress ko in life. Habi ko, try ko nga maging consultant. Ayan. So, naging uh, self-employed ako, no? Consultant level, um, with Vilgro, FSSI, and International Labor for Organi- Organization. Yeah. So, bag, pag self-employed ka, no, you use your skills. Yeah. Then, as we're in true life, si true life kasi we're not employed, rather, ano kami, um, we function as freelancers. And lastly, ayan, investor, bakit, 
<laughs> Bakit kayo yung cellphone, no? Kasi I get to be uh, an investor in stocks and bonds and UITFs. Yan. Uh, nag invest tayo yan, sa iba't ibang products and iba't ibang businesses. Uh, when you have uh, certain portfolios in the banks, yan, in VULs, and in other things. So, kung curious kayo, parang anong sinabi ni Ms. Corina, employee, self-employed, business owner, and investor, I highly suggest, basahin nyo yun. No? I challenge you guys to reach, uh, to read, read that poor book. And maybe post about it later on. So, paano ko dinabasa yung Rich Dad Poor Dad? Yan, um, it was recommended to me by my boss. Oh, so, with this, to, with this uh, quadrant, nag-isip ako, uh, kaya ba no, na kumita ng isang million? How will I earn my first million and save up for my first million? I think nabasa nyo din sa next slide po. Nabasa nyo na din siguro sa Facebook no, na with just 15,000 na uh, income, Possible ba na in the next 10 years, magkaroon ka ng isang million? No? So, with limited uh, income flow kasi medyo matagal. Kaya naman, pero medyo matagal. No? So, ang tanong ko sa sarili ko, will my parents be there for me when I reach that goal? So, I needed to fast track Yan. Uh, my goals. Kailangan ma-reach ko siya kagad. So, financial goals. Paano i-reach siya? So, when uh, I wish then dati, no, na merong someone na nagturo sa akin how to do it. No, hindi yung, sige, mag-research ka na lang. Sige, manood ka ng YouTube. Sige, magbasa ka ng libro. I wanted someone to be there na mapapagtanungan ko. Yan. So, next po. So, in the pursuit of looking for that person, yan. When I found the answer, sabi ko, ay, ang hirap naman pala. No? So, how? How will I earn more? How will I uh, give more? No? Mahirap pala yung journey. So, with this quote, no, yan, may mga pictures din. If your why is strong enough, you will figure out the how. No? So, inisip ko na inisip. And my how, kayo ba guys? No? Kayo ba mga um, uh, graduating people no? is do you know your your why no? why will you be uh, working why will you be working hard no so for me it was my family it was my mother it was my cousin and i wanted the car and lastly um dahil nga taga che ako taga uplb ako i want na ma-achieve ko yung goals ko yeah not in someone else timeline but in my own timeline. So, you have to figure out your why so that the how will be easy. Ayan, next po. So, kayo ngayon, no, uh, isipin nyo, ano ba yung why nyo? Why, will, why would you want to earn more para ba makatravel ng work sa uh, iba't ibang parte ng Pilipinas or do you want to travel outside the country? Ayan. So, yan, message me. No? I will tell you what to do. Or do you want someone to tell you that, message me, I will give you money. Siguro lahat tayo pipiliin natin yung, ah, sige, bigyan mo na lang ako ng pera. Diba? Message me, I will tell you what to do. Message me, I will give you money. Alin kaya dyan yung most common na naririnig natin? So, feeling ko, no, mas madali yung sa TikTok yan. I'll reflect on TikTok lang, no? Sa TikTok, pag may nakikita tayong mga successful virtual assistant, we're so happy for them. No? They, they show that hindi, hindi sila sobrang successful no una or mahirap yung journey nila tas until sa nakapagpunda na sila ng bahay, nabili nila lahat ng gusto nila. Yung mga ganong success stories. Bata sasabihin nila, I will do out. Okay. And there's another trend in TikTok, no? Ito yung mga trend na, bakit malungkot ang beshi ko? Ayan. Kasi wala siyang pera, o kaya nag-live siya, pe, nag-travel siya, kasi YOLO. You only live once. So, Tartravel ako kasi I will never get to be 22 again. The money will come naman. Ayan. Diba? Totoo naman yan, no? Money will come. However, it's only true if yung sarili lang natin yung iniisip natin. 
But if you will think about your family, or if you look back, ka, na actually, may na, uh, something uncertain happened to you. Sino yung mag-take care of your, you, diba? So, it's, it's always your family pa din or your friends. Uh, so, so, sabi ko, ay, hindi na sapat na, sige, mas happy na may magbibigay sa akin ng pera. Pero, I want someone no, out there to tell me how to do it on my own too. Ayan, next po, next slide. Yeah. So, I'll just skip it short na lang siguro, no? Three tips how I kept my financial position. So, after earning my, ano, my first million last <laughs> six months ago, ayan, um, ito yung pinaka na-realize ko na kailangan natin to keep that financial position. Kasi it's not enough, thank you, it's not enough to just earn it or save it, but we must also keep it, no? How to achieve that and not, ano tawag na, uh, huwag nang bumalik yan, sa dating positions natin in terms of finances. So, let me share with you, no, yung number one tip ko lang sa inyo, no, find a role, role model on finances. If it's not your parents, so sa akin, no, to be honest, it was not my parents. Kasi hindi sila, gastador kasi yung pang magulang ko. It was not my friends. Kasi gastador din yung mga kaibigan ko. Ganun ba yung mga friends nyo? <laughs> so, for me, it was my boss. Ayan. Ayan ako dyan. <laughs> sa left picture. It was my boss. Next slide po. Sabi niya sa akin, kasi nasa financial literacy yung trabaho namin. Sabi niya sa akin, on a training, sabi niya, Corina, bata ka pa. Magsimula ka na mag-invest. Sabi ko, bakit po ate? Hindi boss yung tawag ka sa kanya or mom. Sabi niya, ate lang yung tawag ko. Bakit po ate? Sabi niya, simulan mo na kasi bata ka pa. Pero, unahin mo kumuha ng insurance. Sabi ko, we, <laughs> bakit naman insurance? Gusto ko mag-invest. Bata pa ako. Sabi niya, yung anak ko, yan, her, her, her daughter back then was just 13 years old. Sabi niya, yung anak ko, alam mo ba? Ayan. So, kinento niya sa anak na sabi ko, ay, dahil bilang competitive ako, sabi ko, sige nga, try kong humanap ng best insurance. So, I had this mindset before na see and believe. So, hindi ako maniniwala sa'yo until I see you do it. Ayan. So, nung nakita ko, she did it, Ayan. ginaya ko, wala nang masama eh, no? I got my first insurance when I was 23 years old. Uh, yeah, 22, sorry, 22 years old. And after six months of working, kasi yung during six months, yolo-yolo pa ako eh. <laughs> yeah, next po. Yeah. So, another tip to keep your financial position, no? be excited on the journey. And, of course, be excited of the reward. So, ito yung picture lang, no? when climbing up a mountain, di ba? Uh, we have this idea na on the top, it's really beautiful. Pero wala, hindi sa sabi na wala nagtipicture along the way going up to the mountain. So in life then, uh, we we want to be there for someone na successful but during the hardships, ayaw natin maging parte nun. Ayan, so share ko lang sa inyo, the perfect opportunity is always there. No, It may be employment, it may be business, it may be investment. No? Uh, you just have to embrace the process of attaining success. Or, in simpler words, no? um, laging, ano, laging may hirap bago yung success. Yeah, so, wala naman nagsasabi, uy, may hirap yan, try mo. <laughs> no, they will always say na, uh, this is the reward, ito, it's what I got. Pero, bihira yung mag-share yung kanilang challenges and failures. Okay? Kasi it's not attractive pag pinakita namin sa inyo yung challenges, di ba? So I just have to share na be excited on the journey. You'll learn a lot. Lalo na in terms of finances. Yan. And my last step. Yan. Uh, next slide po. Thank you. Uh, protect your greatest asset. So nakita niyo sa picture, I was looking on my watch. Okay. Uh, I'm 30 years old right now. And ito yung pinaka nagustuhan ko. No? Wala nga, wala kaming kayamanan. Ayan. Wala din kaming resources or connection, human capital. 
no? So I had to maximize two things that every one of us has. And ito yung mga variables sa buhay natin, no? Lalo na sa fresh graduate, is your youth, yan yung kabataan, <laughs> and time. Okay? You still have a lot of time to discover who you are, explore opportunities. It's all it's okay to fail kasi it's a challenge that will make you ano um it will make you stronger, know yourself better. So protect your greatest asset. It's you. Diba? So kabataan mo ngayon and your time. So baka sa mga prof po namin baka naisip niyo matanda na kayo hindi pa po bata pa din po kayong lahat. <laughs> Yan sa mga kapwa speakers ko ngayong hapon. Okay, next po. Yeah. So, share ko lang po itong building blocks. Baka pwede po ako mag, ano, uh, <laughs> baka pwede po ako mag, ano, share ng screen. Or I'll just, wag na, I'll just, ano, let you imagine it while you are looking at the screen. Okay? Ay, ah, sige po, mag-share screen na ba ako? Pwede na po ba? Baka host lang po. Kasi, uh, para hindi kayo antokin, magdodrawing ako. <laughs> Pwede po ba mag-share ano, ng aking screen? Well, I'll draw this financial building docs. I'll just extend for a while kasi um, ito yung favorite kong concept na nat nung natutunan ko, I want everyone to know. Ayan. To know. Okay? So, for for Ophel, ayan, si Miss Ophel Yacarino, she's very, ano din dito, um, familiar with this with this concept. No? Okay, so when you graduate, and I want you to imagine you're a fresh graduate, everyone, kahit mga mam namin, <laughs> mga prof namin. So when we graduate, ano yung una nating naiisip, no? When we've earned our first paycheck. Diba, unang-una, yan. Maybe, yan. Ayan. Maybe some of you wants to save, yan. Some of you wants to buy their first car, their first house. Start up a business or travel. Yan yung una natin, isa sa una nating mga naiisip. And for some, yan, ito yung mga shoutout po sa mga batchmates kong, yan, for some, uh, naisip na lang lang magmasteral. Yan, or education, further education. Or PhD. Okay. Or second degree. Uh, degree. Or maging lawyer. Katulad ni attorney Nico. Or maging doctor. Kasi pwede din tayo maging doctors. Di ba? Mga, marami din kami batchmates na naging doctor. Or yung iba naman, they just want to have a job. They just, they want to land on a job that will give benefits. Specifically, Ayan. Maganda kasi sa government. Diba? Pag nag-retire ka, ayan po yung naririnig ko lagi sa mga tita ko. Pag nag-retire ka, Corina, mag-government. I mean, mag-government ka, Corina, para pag nag-retire ka, maganda yung pension mo. So, we are all focused on this three. Okay? Ayan. Tatlong bagay. And medyo pag nasa 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s na. Diba? They ha some has their own family na or carried on with their careers, etc. Uh, malaki na yung wealth nila. Yan. Established na yung estate nila. Or, yun yan, kayamanan. Okay, wealth. Ay, kulang ng L. <laughs> yan. So, on these two blocks lang, no, two layers, we're all very focused on wealth accumulation. Wealth accumulation. Ito naman, wealth distribution. Kasi, uh, ay sorry, ang pangit ng sulat ko. Kasi we're, uh, as human ecologists, nakastick sa akin no, that yung resources natin right now belongs to the future generation. Uh, we have to um, 
carefully ano, manage it and utilize it kasi may future generation pa. And it's not only true for oil, for gas, for land, no? but it's also true for money. Kasi when, when we earn something, uh, we want na, in the future, laging may ganun, di ba? In the future, gusto ko sanang maipamana to sa mga future, sa mga anak ko or sa mga apo ko. So we're all focused on wealth accumulation. And through my boss, through my boss and reading books, isa lang yung, two books pa lang yung nababasa ko. <laughs> Kala mo, dami na, no? Um, ito yung pinaka-importante pala. Ayan. Which is the wealth protection layer. Yung layer sa baba. So, parang ano lang, hierarchy of needs. Diba? Familiar tayo sa triangle na ganyan. Yung base natin should always be, or itong parteng to, should always be solid. Diba? Kasi imagine yourself working hard for 10 to 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. Mabilis lang yung panahon and mabilis when we're focused on a goal, madali lang pala natin siyang mahating. I mean, mangyayari din pala siya. Eventually, it will happen. But what if isang iglap lang, diba? posible kayang bawiin siya sa atin? No? At ano yung mga uncertainties na yun? I think yung uncertainties na pwedeng makaba, pwedeng mabura or pwedeng isel natin yung mga bagay na inipon natin for years, or uncertainties such as sakit, sickness. Have you heard people na binenta yung bahay, binenta yung kotse, or gave up their uh, masteral kasi they could not continue further dahil nagkasakit. Yan. Or aksidente. Ba? Kasi nga, ano ako eh, mahilig ako mamasyal nun. Yun yung fear ko. Isang araw, nasa Ifugao ako, uh, gabi yung biyahe kasi sa Ifugao, blind curve, nag-overtake yung jeep namin. Unfortunately, nakita niya. Ay, sorry. Uh, pag take, overtake niya, may kasalubong palang bus. So, buti na lang sa right side niya na ikabig kasi kung sa left side, bangin na siya. So, dun ko na appreciate na Thank you, Lord. Buhay pa ako. Ayan. Thank you, Lord. Walang nangyari at sa kanan niya ako na ikabig. Yan. Okay. So, accident. Yan. And of course, wala namang ano, uh, immune dito. Yan. Sa death. Diba? Death or kamatayan. Okay. So, ayaw, ayaw naman natin masyadong pag-usapan yung death kasi it's a sad thing. But it's a reality. And it's an inevitable uh, reality. Ayan. Okay, so, I hope, no, uh, yan, last, siguro last five, last two, last two minutes lang. I hope while we are all focused on these things, no, you get to protect yourself. Yeah, get to protect yourself and uh, protect your best asset, which is yourself, your time. Yeah, protect your dreams by protecting yourself. Ayan. So, stop share na lang po ako. Um, Mampa, last slides na lang po siguro. Ayan. Sorry for taking Sir Jules, uh, Sir Jules time. <laughs> yeah, next slide lang po. So, how did my friends got their first million? It's another story to tell, but I'd like to invite you guys. Next po. Next slide po. So, another inspiration pers inspirational person sa akin ay pabak lang po. Yan, which is si Chinky Tan na nakikita niyo sa TikTok, sa Facebook. Uh, I, I have an event on August 5 uh, where, where I will personally meet him. So, gust kung gusto niyo po siyang makilala, ma-meet, marinig, mag-talk, wag lang sa TikTok or Facebook, just message me on Facebook. So, last slide na po. He'll talk about, um, mas magaling po siyang financial coach or wealth coach than me, debt uh, utang coach. Yan. So if you want to watch him per, uh, live, uh, connect with me. No, uh, I have three more tickets or three more seats on August 5. Ayan. So mga, mga, mga sir, students, and kapwa ko, speakers, uh, hopefully no, you'll have time on August 5. Ayan. So again, thank you very much and... Uh, good luck, everyone.
uh, on reaching yan, your firming up your financial status. Yan. So, thank you po. Thank you, ma'am. So, do we have any questions for ma'am Corina? So, ang key takeaway naman natin dito ay hindi lang wealth generation ang kailangan ninyong matutunan, but also you have to know how to do wealth preservation. Okay? So, you have to balance your uh, wants and needs. You have to manage your finances. Okay? So, thank you so much again, Ma'am Corina. Our next speaker is Mr. Jules Alejandre. So, Mr. Jules is a licensed nutritionist dietitian and a health promotion and policy specialist with over 10 years of robust experience in health and nutrition program planning and policy development for government and international non-government organizations in the Philippines and in the United Kingdom. So, currently, he is a PhD candidate at GCU's School of Computing Engineering and Built Environment and the James Cotton Institute as a Hydro Nation Scholar of the Scottish Government. He also works as a Senior Parliamentary Intern on One Health and Planetary Health at the UK Parliament House of Lords. For his PhD research, Mr. Jules is developing an, and investigating the acceptability of a blue-green prescribing program for mental health care in NHS Scotland's primary health care settings using exploratory mixed methods and co-creation embedded in an implementation science framework. The blue-green prescribing is a sustainable health care strategy that aims to prevent and reduce pharmaceutical pollution through the appropriate prescription of blue space activities and wise prescription of antidepressants that have less environmental risks. Mr. Jules is interested in using evidence synthesis, behavior change models, and participatory approaches in developing and implementing health and nutrition programs under the lens of planetary health. Mr. Jules also completed his Master's in Public Health and Health Promotion at Bangor University Shebby, Scholar of the UK Government's Foreign and Commonwealth Development Office, and his PGC in Research Methods at GCU. He obtained his Bachelor's in Nutrition at the University of the Philippines. And Mr. Jules also took short courses on social innovation through the Erasmus Plus Consortium, Survey and Quantitative Research at Columbia University, Mixed Methods Research at the University of Michigan, Health Planning and Policies for Climate Change and Health from the Johns Hopkins Fall Institute at Universitat Kung Fu Pagra and Health Policy Management from Harvard Special Session on Health Policy Management at Tokyo University. So in 2022, Mr. Jules was awarded with the British Council Challenge Prize for Early Career Researchers on Nature-Based Public Health Interventions along with other early career researchers in the UK and Germany. He was also awarded a policy fellowship by Scotland Centre of Expertise for Waters in 2024. So Mr. Jules is interested in using evidence synthesis, behavior change models of men as mentioned, and participatory approaches in developing and implementing health and nutrition programs, again under the lens of planetary health. So now, again, also present with us via Zoom, let us welcome Mr. Jules Alejandro to discuss how to build your education. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, uh, my name is Jules Alejandre and um, I'm one of your speakers for today's event. Uh, but before I start my talk, I would like to thank um, UPLB College of Human Ecology Alumni Association for organizing this event, specifically to um, Mom Jen for inviting me to share something to, to this brilliant crowd in, in online and in the room. Um, I would also like to acknowledge um, Dr. Sandalo, who was here a while ago, I think he was in the room a while ago. Um, some faculty and staff in the room, fellow CHE alumni, and um, to the graduates who are in the room as well. Right, so when Mam Jen invited me as one of the speakers for today's talk, um, my first question to her actually was, Mam Jen, sino po yung participants ng talk or sino attendees ng talk for today? And for me, that was a very important question because I need to learn who I'm talking with in order for me to 
frame the content of my talk. So when I learned that I'm going to talk with the graduating class of the College of Human Ecology, I knew that I'm going to talk with a brilliant, smart, and um, critical group of people. Um, so I, sorry, there's just a message I need to check. Okay. Do, do I, can I continue or should I wait? until the technical difficult okay i can continue already okay <laughs> okay um so so yeah so 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 when i learned that i'm going to talk with you guys today i knew that i'm going to talk with an excellent group of people um so i started to get nervous and get um, a, a bit anxious um nervous and anxious because i'm going to talk about becoming a lifelong learner and the technicalities of lifelong learning actually as a concept is something that it's not being taught to us in the field of public health. Um, so I started to research about the meaning of lifelong learning, and I dare not there is a chunk of information about um, lifelong learning or defines lifelong learning. And the couple of definitions that resonated with me actually is that lifelong learning is a continuous process that occurs from cradle to grave, it is a process of stimulating and empowering individuals to acquire and apply skills and abilities required to realize their full potential. Um, lifelong learning is about providing educational access to everybody at all levels and for all needs. And it is a tool needed to respond to global challenges. And this definition really resonated with me because it provides a certain positionality and realization that yes, I may not be familiar with the whole theories and technicalities that form the concept of lifelong learning. However, this process is something that I am continuously experiencing every day. And I'm very sure most of you in the room and in the online room also experiences. Um, and so I went back to the time when I was about to graduate from UP and reflected on the topic that I was craving to learn about when I was fellow graduates like you. And a topic that helped, a topic that helped me propel and reach my potential. Um, a common topic that all of us here can relate with. Um, so for my talk, I want to focus about learning how to realize your lifelong dreams. And because yes, as UP graduates, we have big dreams, big goals for ourselves, our families, our communities, and our country. But sometimes, because of a critical milestone in our life, such as the transition from being a student to joining the workforce, we are overwhelmed of these big aspirations and that could have an impact on how we want to achieve these dreams. So our journey as lifelong learner usually start in our childhood. And my childhood would usually bring memories of where I grew up. I grew up in Albay, which we know is a typhoon stricken in a disaster-prone province, and growing up in this province uh, provided me an opportunity to witness certain inequalities at an early age. I was born in a lower middle-income class family. My mother has a small sari sari store, and my father has double job working as a tricycle driver and helping with my grandfather's rice milling business. I spent my primary and secondary um, education in a public school, and due to my family's economic circumstances, I had many limitations as to how I supported my basic education, such as limitations in accessing books, computers, internet, tutorial classes, etc. As a matter of fact, during my sixth grade, our local government unit gave us the opportunity to learn how to operate the computer, which was great during that time, but because there are many learners in that a small class or in that small program and I do not have a computer unit in our house, this meant that I only had one hour in every two weeks to learn how to use a computer. Um, in, I remember also in my first year high school where Harry Potter books were very famous, um, I had to borrow whatever Harry Potter book is available from my friends and read it within one to two weeks so I can borrow whatever Harry Potter book is available next. And that meant being able to read the whole book series ran in, in the random order, not even chronologically. And as a child, I do not know what this, what, what, that these are inequalities already that I was experiencing. And all I know that this is because of our 
uh, this is due to our economic circumstances. But you know what kind of inequality hurts the most? It's, it is the unequal treatment towards you because of your gender, because of your capability, and because of your economic status. I was never top of my class, and as a matter of fact, um, I consider myself as an average student. I was, um, so when I passed UPCAT for a BS nutrition degree in UPLB, one of my high school teachers just told our, cla our class randomly, yan si Alejandro na pumasa lang yan ng UPCAT kasi nan ko ta course uh, ang sa UPLB yung inaplayan niya. And that invalidated the hard work and the resources that my parents and I put on just to be able to take and eventually pass UPCAT. After passing UPCAT, I thought that all of my dreams already came true. And at some point, it felt that way. But soon enough, I was again faced with another hurdle. And that is, I may not be able to study in UP because that would stretch my parents' financial resources to cover my weekly allowance, my dorm rents, and my tuition fee. And all these experiences taught me how to dream. And my dream that time is to study and graduate from UP on time and with flying colors. And eventually, due to my parents' hard work, I was able to go to UPLB. And when I entered UPLB, I had high hopes of graduating with honors, but I got distracted with competition and the constant urge of fitting a certain mold. UP students are the country's creme de la creme, and so I thought that I would always have to be in my best intellectual form. I need to be among the top 10 students during exams, I need to have a G1 not lower than 1.75. And don't get me wrong, having all those motivations and goals is okay. What is not okay is when it gets into your head because that's when unhealthy competition starts. It was only during my junior year in UP that I realized that I need to break this thought. And that's when my year in UP got more interesting and more meaningful. I was able to identify my role models who were my amazing professor, lecturers, and advisors. And these role models were the ones who actually recognized my potential and my capabilities. I was able to build a community of friends who became my lifelong networks and permanent seaters around my kitchen table. I was able to have a deeper understanding and was able to define the different inequalities that surrounded me. A mother who discharged her sick child from PGH Oncology Ward that I witnessed without permission from attending from the attending doctors because um, she was worried of their medical bills meant that there are inequalities in how we access healthcare in the country. Children attending school with an empty stomach mean that there are inequalities in how we access food in the Philippines. And witnessing and understanding this gave me the opportunity to create a connection between resolving these inequalities and realizing my personal dreams. And so resolving these inequalities became a part of my own dreams. So when I graduated from UP, my dream was to pass and top the Nutritionist Dietitian Licensure Exam, work as a government dietitian for the Philippine General Hospital for two years, um, pursue medical school in UP Manila, become a gastroenterologist, and serve the people by working for PGH. And having sat on your seats few years ago, I would say that this point in time is a critical milestone in your journey as a lifelong learner. Critical because this is an opportunity for you to build upon your personal dream and at the same time strategize, reflect, and create your personal timeline on how you want to achieve this dream. Well, they say that graduating from UP is more difficult than passing the UPCAT. And indeed, this is true, not just because of the mental gymnastics that you have to deal with, but also because when you graduate from UP, you'll find yourself between the intersection of the sphere of idealism and the sphere of realism. And this may sound and feel daunting, but I assure you this is completely normal. Um, because this would be an opportunity for your personal discovery that the dreams that you built in UP might need a bit of adjustments and recalibration. The realities outside uh, the university do not mean that our dreams are unachievable in the real world. Um, these realities are there to calibrate our dreams, 
so we could respond to the inequalities that we experienced and deeply understood during our childhood and while we were at the university. For some like me, these realities um, are there to redirect us to a place where we can where we, where we can optimize our hidden skills while serving the people and at the same time realizing our dreams. After graduating from UP, my reality is that I, I needed to take a longer and an unaffordable path so I could work as a dietitian and PGH. My other reality is that we do not have the financial capacity so I could go to med school. Instead, my reality was I did pass the NDLE or the board exam, but I was not in the top 10. And I did work for the government, not as a dietitian, but as a public health nutritionist for the National Nutrition Council of the DOH and DSWD. And these realities gave me the opportunities to recalibrate my dream and be redirected to a different path. For around seven years working as a civil servant and a public health nutritionist, I was able to face what inequalities look like in different parts of the country and how these inequalities are compounded by inefficiencies and corruption. My reality is being bribed by a politician with 8,000 pesos so that I could give them a higher evaluation for their nutrition programs. My other reality is talking with salt farmers and helping them on how to properly iodize their salt so that the salt that every family uses in the Philippines is properly iodized or has the correct amount of iodine because we have a problem with iodine deficiency disorders. My other reality is facing individuals who put me in a box, clip my wings, and have the power over my own dreams. And these realities give me the opportunity to fight and stand up for my dreams and give myself a chance to reshape or rebuild my dreams based on what the needs of what is bigger than me. And maybe for some of us here, here our operational definition of lifelong learning is to do postgraduate degrees in the Philippines or in the other countries. For someone who have done both, my strong advice, especially for the graduate, is do not rush into it. After you graduate from UP, maybe part of your big dream is to apply to a scholarship abroad and do a master's or a doctoral program. And that dream is completely valid and that is okay. But do not rush and pressure yourselves on landing into the dream in the shortest possible time. Remember about facing realities? I suggest that you try this. Face your realities. Because by doing so, you are giving yourself a valuable tool that you can use when you apply for international scholarship and postgraduate studies. When you face your realities, you are giving yourself the opportunity to experience how to solve the challenges in your realities. You are giving yourself the chance to hone your skills, develop new ones, acquire real-world knowledge, and expand your sphere of engagement. Remember that by doing a postgraduate degree, you need to add new knowledge to the existing body of knowledge. And how will you be able to do this meaningfully if you do not know what knowledge is out there or is not there? And by facing your realities, you are giving yourself the chance to build questions about these realities and try potential solutions when you do postgraduate studies. And when you apply for these programs abroad, you will be asked what you have done so far and what motivates you to apply in the program or in the scholarship. And most of the time, the most impactful motivations or the most successful motivations are those that question societal, real-world challenges. And when you get successful in achieving this dream, try to go beyond your known experiences and learn what you know, connect with those outside your sphere of engagement, and influence them to co-create a shared reality and to work with you in achieving your dreams. This means finding the connection of your field with other fields to look for better solutions to challenges within your shared realities. When I did my master's, I thought I would be focusing my research on public health nutrition because I'm a public health nutritionist by training. However, by connecting with those outside my sphere of engagement, and influencing them, I went beyond my known and learned knowledge and work on the intersection between food, nutrition, and the built environment. 
I think to end, I would just like to reiterate the four pieces of lifelong learning advice that I shared with you. As UP graduates, remember that we learn to dream based on our experiences. Build your dreams and strategize on how to achieve them. Fight and stand up for it and give yourself a chance to reshape or rebuild it for the common good. Go beyond your known experiences and learn what you know. Connect with those outside your sphere and influence them to co-create a shared reality and work with you to achieve your dreams. My name is Jules and thank you very much for your attention. Um, do we have any questions for Sir Jules and Sir Jules, yes, Sir Jules, 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 It, it really, uh, thank you, Mom Jen, for your question. And I would be speaking about it with my experience, no, and how I, um, how I observe other people who done straight postgraduate studies after their masters or after their undergraduate studies. Because here in the UK, for example, after you did your undergraduate studies, you have the opportunity to go for PhD already without taking any masters. And there are a lot of Students actually who do that here after their after their undergraduate they would go straight to PhD and I think what I've observed is that there's a lack of understanding about what the realities are in the ground. Yes, they are all knowledgeable about theories, about concepts, about models, about how to do things uh, by the book, but they are having the difficulty to apply this to real world experiences. And I can always compare this with myself because be before doing my master's and before doing my PhD, um, I was able to work for the government for almost six or seven years. And that gave me a different perspective on how I develop my questions, on how I do my research, on how I would approach certain um, question for, for my research. Um, but we have... I, 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 I would not like to invalidate the experiences of those who did their PhD program or their postgraduate studies straight because that's their own experience. But for me, I think it would add a lot of value. It would add a lot of, it's add another layer of perspective and another lens if you're able to work um, outside first or after your master or after your undergrad, you're able to work first and then do your master's. Because as, as I mentioned a while ago, When you do your master's, you have to develop a mastery about a certain method, for example, and how you're able to understand that, how you're able to define what mastery it is that you want to develop if you don't understand what the real world problem is. And for me, understanding that real problem, that the real world problem um, could only be, uh, I mean, it is much more meaningful if you immerse yourself in the real world first. And so, so that's just my opinion. But if there are a lot of students here who do, who do um, straight PhD, and that's just my observation. Thank you so much, Sir Jules. So, do we have any other questions? Yeah. By the way, you mentioned you, Sir Jules, the lifelong learning. That's one of the program learning outcomes of IHNF, and also um, one of the graduate attributes that you have to uh, embody as you graduate from UPNP. Okay, so when you say lifelong learning, as according to Sir Jules, you have to continue to explore, to do research, to continue learning about your field. Okay, so thank you so much again, Sir Jules. And we are now down to our next speaker. She's here. Our next speaker is Ms. Alka Carino. She is the co-owner of Hopes to Go and the co-owner of CTS Uh, Lichon Sabama, even doon sa uh, Ringo Duquet. And she is also a child alumni with a BSHE degree, major in Human and Family Development Studies. She worked as a former Amazon virtual assistant and 
former assistant unit, unit manager in Brew Lab UK. So to provide us a lecture on entrepreneurial mindset, let us welcome here on stage in the front, sorry, Miss Ophel.
yung mga pieces na nagagawa ko. But ngayon, through practice, I was able to master my craft. Yeah. So, practice until you master your work. So, I continued practicing. And then eventually, syempre, kailangan mo ipenta. Kailangan mo ipenta yung pieces mo. Eh, wala naman kami model. So, bakit hindi rin ako? Diba? Kailangan ako na rin yung mag-model ng pieces namin para mag-enta siya. Right? But, of course, the pandemic happened. Yeah. So, nung mag-pandemic, nag-reside ko din po ako sa OU. So, lahat naman tayo, naka-lockdown yan. And then, eventually, nag-online job na ako. Yun na yun na nung virtual assistant ako. And then, nag-join din ako sa blue life. Like, great. But, we decided, no, eventually, diba, nung mag-lumag ng restrictions, um, nag-open na lang bazaars. Yeah. So, dito po kasi sa Los Banos, meron po siyang weekend bazaars. Kung familiar kayo, meron na tinatawag na Batong Malakayang Bazaar Weekend. So, my friends and I decided to join there. Yeah. So, si Jer Coffee, yes, I'm friends with Jer Coffee, partner ko siya. Ito sa Hawks to Go. Nahikipet lang kami sa kanya before. Yeah. So, as in, maliit na kayo lang yan and all of the art pieces were there. No? As in, kasi hindi pa namin afford yung isang kalimit din. Kasi for us, ba't kami mag-invest sa isang tent over a month yun? Paano kami pera? Diba? So, nakikishare na kami ito. And eventually, you know, nung nakakaipon na kami ito konti-konti, nag-design this house to go na mag-rent ng sarili ng tent. Yes! Success na yun for us! Kasi may sarili na kami ng tent. And then, with this opportunity, also open an opportunity for my family. So, syempre, pandemic, my dad, unfortunately, got laid off. So, dami din po yung tatay ko sa mass layoff ng mga companies. So, walang work. And during that time, ako lang. Ako lang yung may sweat ko sa amin na stable. So, define na kay Tera lahat ginawa ko. Through, folks to go, nagkibenta ng food, kung ano-ano, lahat yung nasa ko yan. Kasi, I know, may responsibility na ako sa family ko. And there came, yun, nung nakita niyo na sa may ilan yung kamay na snorke ang ko. So, dyan po nagsimula si Silvias. So, ang parents ko po kasi ay Tugong Picolano. My dad is a, um, from Kapsur. And my mom is a, from Kapuarte. So, sa Kapuarte po kasi ay magdadaling sila gumawa ng mga delikasi. No. So, si Ang po kasi, um, Pinoy po, chief po siya. No. Tapos, hindi po siya, ayan, let's go. Yan. Si Ampo po ay delikasi sa province ng nanay ko. So it's, uh, sabihin natin mochi, no? Glutinous rice na yung malamang peanuts sa loob. Hindi siya, hindi familiar ang karamihan ng pinto. So kaya sabi ko sa parents ko, why not introduce natin siya? No? Kasi ano siya eh, bago siya eh. Baka naman pumatok. And true enough, totoo, no? Nagustuhan naman ng market. And with constant practice, no? Yan, nagsuform na kami ng products. So, nung una, hindi naman siya perfect. Um, malaki yung sizes nung no? ako na nagagawa namin. Minsan, joke hazard na siya kasi nung lahat pa nang nagawa. Minsan naman, um, mali yung batch ng timpla. Ganyan. So, it was a constant experiment. Diba? Of everything. So, eventually, Ayun, uh, nagbabazaar na din si Ako along with Oaks to Go. Tapos, during this is a very memorable moment for us in the family. Kasi during this moment, I remember si Sir Clark Nebrio, um, the DPI head, he met me here sa bazaar na patong malaki. Tapos, in-invite niya ako to a DPI bazaar. No, sabi niya, you might be interested to join our bazaars in Santa Rosa, Santa Rosa, all over Laguna. So, with that, it opened a lot of opportunities for us as a family. So, that's why the Ita Ang Bazaar in Boho. No. 2021 to 2022. Yeah. Taong bazaar po kami. But, matalas po kami na mag-bazaar noon sa Vista Mall, sa Tarasa, and all over Laguna. Miikot po kami. Kami ng dad ko. Ng dad ko. Yeah. So, yeah. Minsan nakikitayubol kami kasi syempre may bayad. <laughs> diba? At yung mga times naman na sarili tayo ng table kapag libre siya. Tapos, eventually, 
sabi namin, ha, parang hindi na-sustainable yung bazaar. Kasi syempre, weekly lang siya, or kaya gawin kami sa transpo. Kasi from LB, sa taro sa, uwi na everyday. So, parang nakakatakot. Diba? So, sabi namin, may konti ipo naman tayo. Baka try natin i-risk. Risk na to a bigger business, no? Rent pa tayo. Place na tayo ng um, ng pwesto. Pero, bago pa na nangyari yun, si Ampo pa na kasi yung product namin, remember? Ngayon, parang ka na nung ditsyon sa baka. Layo, di ba? Walang connection. So, iniisipan namin ng way talaga na magkaroon ng iba pang product line si Ampo. Pero, hirap kasi na sundan niya kasi kakalit. Tapos, daily lang niya siya ang flight niya. Eh, actually, yung Ampo pa, madaling talaga siya magluto kasi masarap talaga siya magluto. Like, legit. <laughs> Yan. So, Um, and then my dad, no, he was experimenting um, with a lot sa intercontermodynamics. Yeah, so, nag-research siya and naparemenis daw siya one day. Sabi niya, naalala na daw ng bata sila, nagluluto sila sa palayok. So, diba na olden times, gusto sila nagluluto. Sabi niya, why not ko gano? Um, baka pwede mag-ihaw or mag-lichol using the clay pot. So, nag-insert siya, ano siya mangyayari, ano ba yung design na tama for it. And eventually, naka-form siya no, ng jar niya na pwede mag-ihaw ng manok. So, ngayon po, ayan, nabuon na si The Chansa. So, syempre, sa una, hindi pa rin naman siya perfect, no? Dami ko na pong manok, matinig pa, naluto ng atin ko. Dami na ako magkapakpak, no? Dahil araw-araw manok yung ulam namin, parang perfect namin yung recipe. So, syempre, kailangan na i-boost, no, palawakin yung aming market, balik na naman kami sa bazaar. Kasi that's the best way, eh, para yun, eh, diba, na makilala siya ng market. Bazaar, para kami, join, para kami sa bazaar. And yan, yung PLP, patong malaki, every weekend, yung bazaar kami. And one time, no, I posted on TikTok. Um, a staff from Unang Hiling messaged me that nakita na may lalala na kami through TikTok. So yes, guys, kung nag-aalangan kayo na, ah, oh, wala na akong makakakita sa content ko, hindi. Just post it and eventually somebody will find it. It's true enough, no, na kami, my parents got interviewed for the Panubir segment. So, yung segment ko na to, this was live. We got the message July 17, 2022. We were on air July 20, 2022. So very short lang yung, actually na-confirm lang na mag-on air kami July 19, lunch time. So we don't have enough time to prepare kasi, kasi lahat ng props doon kami pinahanda. Ganyan, so ganun siya, ganun lang tayo pala yung mga segment na rin. Anyway, ang galing, nakakatuwa na na itong moment na to for our family kasi sobrang nakatulong siya sa boost no market. Ayan. Kaso po, um, no, yung first slide na lang hanina, uh, we yung first question natin sa maas. So, we tried the market there. But unfortunately, it wasn't for us. No? Um, the location is good, pero there's no good traffic. What we wanted was good traffic. So, eventually, we transferred here. Wala ka na. Nasa lang sa Mary Magdugit. Yung tapat na kapit. Yung kaya na yung burger place na. Yun, yun kami before. <laughs> Kaso, noon, 3 months kami next stay dyan. Pero, maliit mo siya yung space for our family restaurant. It's so small. Kita niyo, two tables lang siya. Tapos, yun na yun mismo yung kitchen, yung may water jug doon. Kitchen na yun. And then, tabi yung mga bag. So, ganyan lang talaga siya kanil. Like this lang. Yun na yun. And so, parang mahal na ulit. So, sabi namin, ha, medyo pagiging tayo dito ah. So, nag-pray pa kami na nag-pray and they manifested for a bigger space. Which is, kata na, yung current place namin. Yan, so, kung nagdaanan na po, yan, si Sintias, dyan na po kami. Yan, so, yan, so, ito rin po pala yung family ko. Yan, si Papa, si Mama, si Elena, si Lena. Actually, yung nagbe-business course ko talaga, ang nagbe-business course, yung brother ko. Pero, hindi siya nagbukos sa business. Ako yung nagbukos sa business. Anyway, 
So, why would I encourage you not to start your own business? Back in Yapa. So, question one is how? No. Actually, I cannot really give you like a technical advice on how to start your own business. But for me, no, you can find something that you're passionate about. So, like what I did, um, I turned my trauma into an business opportunity. I'm very passionate about food. I like to eat. Like since stressy game out that no food trend game out that. So no, I also turned it into a business. And I know it works, no, when you pursue business. Actually, guys, I'm sorry, I'm a business owner, no, because sorry, you're my boss. You, oh, sorry, you're my boss, mo. Oh, ikaw yung boss ng sarili mo. Wala na titik ka sa yun na, oh, tayo ka na, oi, oti ka na, oi, kaya ito, oi, kaya niyan. Kasi ikaw na pati sa iti. Diba? Ikaw na bahala kung ano gagawin mo for everything. I am free na. This is what I love most. Kasi ako napansin ko nung yung flow niya ko, hindi talaga nag-work for me when I make time out. Hindi talaga. Tapos madalas ako late. O kaya, madalas ako under time. Ganun ako sa nang flow niya before. Pero ngayon, as a business owner, ako na nags- Tiktik na ako ay ganto oras ako bumata sa sinias. Ako ay ganto oras magkimi ako. Ako ay ganto oras ang gawa ko na sa for the business, di ba? So for me, it's very flexible. Unlimited income. Oh, sa tao na limited income. But what I mean with this is that ikaw kasi magtiktik. Kung ganon ka lang income gusto mo, gusto mo kumita na malaki. Kaya magbukas ka every day. Kung magbukas ka every four hours, kasi ba yun? Kasi ikaw naman ang tiktik eh. Kung gusto mo na, kung ang pagod ka na, hindi, sabi ko muna. Rest na muna, di ba? Then try na yung natin din. Pero, syempre, meron niyang months. Masakit sa ulo. Sobrang sakit mo sa ulo magkaroon ng sarili business. Kasi, kailangan mo matutog, mag-wear ng multiple hats. So, like me, no? Sa amin po, ako ang COO, siya ang the owner. Ako din na CEO. Minsan ako din na driver. Minsan ako din yung call, minsan ako yung accountant, ako na kapag, ako na hat. Ganon. So, kailangan, willing ka mag-wear ng multiple hats. Kasi syempre, there will be times na wala kang staff. Bigyan hindi papasok, kung isang sayo, ma'am, yung mga kapasok, sorry. Ano ka gawin mo nun, di ba? Pati tigil mo yung operation. May customers ka na, kung mapasok, hindi, hindi ka na magluto kasi wala kang staff. Syempre, hindi. So, kailangan, alam mo, Willing, willing ka. Important to willing ka. We wear your work upon hats nyo. Yan. Kailangan very patient ka din. Okay, when I say patience, kasi syempre, hindi naman araw-araw Pasko. May mga times na matumal, na benta. May mga times na sobrang, wow, bakit sa nagagali itong, sa nagagali yung customers natin. So, through it all, kailangan patient ka with the progress of your business. Kailangan din, we need ka to always do. There's always room for improvement. So, R&D is always key. No? You continue on researching. Yeah. So, even though na perfect na namin yung um, recipe na chicken, no, we find ways, ano pa yung ibang recipes na pwede namin ma-add sa menu to so, entice our customers. Yan. And syempre, kailangan ko na tayong positive attitude. All the time. So, syempre, yun nga, hindi naman parating okay, hindi naman parating maganda. Pero, we have to keep in mind, sa akin kasi ito eh, di ba? Kailangan go, 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 pa rin na ito. Tapos, syempre, dahil sa'yo yan, protektahan mo. No, at all costs. Kailangan protektahan mo at all costs. And always remember to be humble. Kasi, syempre, binibigay yan sa atin, di ba? Ginagyan yan ni Lord sa atin as a business. Yeah, so in every business, there's... Ah, I'm sorry. There is, merong failure, and merong disappointment. Pero, kung maniwala ka, and you keep at it, okay? Kung naniwala ka and you keep at it, it might take off. I say might. Kasi still, 
hindi sa lahat, para sa lahat ng business. Okay. Pero kung ikaw mismo naniniwala ka sa business mo, and you keep at it, baka akonti ako siya. Yun. So, always be the first person to be with your business. And, baka magkaroon ka ng VIPC para mapanood yung success. Yun lang po. So, for more advice, gusto nyo pa uh, ako makita or makausap na no? nabutan ganyan in general. Nandun lang po ako sa Cynthia's visit lang pa. Yun lang po. So, thank you so much. May questions ko ba tayo for Ms. Alfem? Do we have any questions? Mama ko may tanong po. May discount na po ba yung under a dream HS? Malapit na yung pag-queries. Ah, ayun. So, i-like and follow nyo yung page. Support our own local. Local chat. Yes po, Ma'am Jen. sharing your stories and they're very inspired by your, your sharing your experience. Because in the usual, no, especially in the, the academy no, um, or for graduates, sa internship, po, dito kayo pwede magtrabaho no, as an employee. Uh, ngayon, there's a realization about you know, uh, creating that entrepreneurial mindset as well uh, for you to be an entrepreneur. Sa so, tingin niyo po, ano yung strength natin as uh, graduates from the college to be an entrepreneur and also what do we need to improve on if you want to pursue that track. Okay. Um, actually, but ako po na, that's in comparison with you. I think our strength natin as graduates of human ecology would be positive as a No, So, ang dami natin kaya doing actually to be honest eh. And across all things, di ba? dami tayong alam about everything. So, take it as an advantage. Because actually, yung, in terms of business, naman, you can learn all the technical terms online. Diba? Or you can, actually, through TikTok, ah, dami ka na magtutunan eh. Pero, um, for me po kasi, the best talaga is for you to experience it. No? Take the risk. And, pag nag-risk ka na, doon mo naman determine kung gusto ko pa rin tuloy, or hindi na ba, or ano ba, or pwede kasi purong sulong eh. Doon lang nagsa talaga sa business. Pero sabi ko nga, kapag naniniwala ka, ang valuable yung business mo, ang valuable yung product mo, go lang, push mo lang yan. Sa alam nyo, ang maganda ba kapag local business owner ka, grabe yung support ng community. As in. So, kami din po sa family, nagpulat din po kami na, ha, saan ang nagkaling talahan? It's just worth a time. So, ganun po siya as a business owner. Thank you so much. Okay, na po. Thank you po. Salamat po po. So, that's the last speaker. So, thank you very much po again sa lahat ng ating speakers for today. Thank you for giving us time and gracing us with your presence here today. So, may I ask, we can now go to the awarding of certificates. So, may I call here on stage the Chaya President. Dr. Jen, our um, Associate Dean, Dr. Talavera, the ano, career chair, Mamika, sige po.
Zoom. Thank you so much po, Ma Karina. Papadala na lang po namin ang inyong certificate. Thank you so much po. And also, thank you so much po, Sir Jules Alejandro, for delivering your topic on building your education. So, po ka po po with Ma Karina and Ma Sir Jules po. Okay, po. And last year, of course, thank you so much, Ma'am Ofen Carino, for your lecture on But at the same time, 
may balance din in your spiritual life, may balance din in your physical life, may balance in everything. When we say balance, alam nyo rin dapat kung nasan kayo nakatayo. Meaning, kailangan alam nyo kung ano yung pinanilindigan nyo. Do not just go for a job simply for a job. Okay? Make sure that you hold on to your own personal convictions, faith, and belief system. Kanina may sinabi rin about reading. No? Si Corina Anthony Krabi niya read by Robert Kiyosaki. Well, you know, while you're starting your career, always read, learn, risk, and experience. Okay? Without those things, and you, you know, you just back on what you learned in college. That's nice. Pero without continuously learning and growing yourself, then you will not be competitive enough outside. And that's why you need to always do that. Eh, kanina na, ano, na, 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 you need to add value. Sabi sa, to add value to employers. Actually, to add value to everyone. Always try to add value. Meaning, you make yourself valuable so that you can be of value to other people. So, lagi isipin ninyo, how can I, pag-apply ka ng work, lagi isipin ninyo, Huwag yung campus weldo. Importante niya para sa balance. But you also have to make sure that what can I do so that I can add value to them? What can I do so that if yung work nila, yung business nila, I can be of so much value for them that they would like to take me in. Okay? And uh, kanina sabi rin, be relevant. Tama? So when you're, when you're applying for a job, always see relevance. Kailangan uh, isipin ninyo, how can I be relevant for them? Don't just be so parang, parang uh, close na ito ang aking ano eh. This is my expertise. Ito yung, uh, you can always be relevant no? by actually expressing kung paano yung course mo, yung training mo, yung experience mo in college can be relevant to what they do. Diba? Yung kanina may sinabi, diba? All context. No? Being, uh, being ano, ano, yung parang contextual lagi ang isip. So when you are looking for context, you should always look for relevance. No? And then differentiate. Sabi rin kanina, na dapat alam mo how to differentiate yourself. Because maraming graduates. Tama ba? Hindi lang kayo yung graduate na lalabas sa university. Marami. That means, marami mag-a-apply sa work. And I've experienced, you know, there's one experience na at hindi na na-experience ko. Kasi nag-apply ako sa isang farm company. Nag-start kami ng morning, 8 o'clock. There were hundreds of us sa ground floor. Pagkatapos ng tanghali na, there were only several of us nasa third floor na kami. Until 7 o'clock na ako na-interview, there were only a few of us nasa top floor na kami. Pagkatapos nun, the following day, exam pa ulit. O may battery of exams pa ulit. And so, can you imagine kung uh, you don't know how to differentiate yourself, then you will just be one of the people there. So, how do you differentiate yourself, di ba? Um, that means, kailangan alam mo what you can offer more than others. Di ba? So, kailangan, kailangan mo yung sarili mo. So, you don't just say, ah, graduate po ako ng UPLP. Marami na graduates ng UPLP. But so, how do you compete with others? And then, invest. Not just financially. Important yung investing financially. But invest, not just financially, but invest time. So which means when you're doing something, you have to invest your time. Don't waste your time. Invest. Meaning, kailangan alam mo na when you put your time into something, may balik yun. Investing. Investment is not just about money. It's always about time. Sabi ni Karina kanina, you and time. You and time. Okay. Uh, buti na siya. Yung time ko lang nag-anniversary ko sa college youth club na the other day, so kami ko, okay, at least youth pa. Uh, also, invest in relationships. When I say invest in relationships, you don't have to, I'm not speaking about romantic relationships. But you see, when you're working and if you want to be effective, you need to make sure that you don't burn bridges. And that is why the mindset ko lagi is to help others. Kaya may volunteerism, di ba? So you want to help other people. Kasama yun, you invest on relationships by helping others. It's not a competition. Huh? By the way, pag nating doon, kailangan ako pinakamkali, ako pinakamkali. You also try to help other people rise up. Di ba? Kasi when you, you help people, you help lift people up, you know what happens? 
you get lifted up as well. And that's why that's what you need to do. You lift people up. It's called edification. And uh, the brand, the brand. The other one is network. You need to continuously network. Maganda na yun, kasi it's easy to network. Bakit? Kasi naka, you're online. Ba? May social media. Uh, Sabi nga ni Ophel kanina. And you know yung social media in TikTok? It was able to get her business recognized even more. So you network. Uh, pero hindi ibig sabihin ako, oh, okay, Facebook. Pero wala akong Facebook. Wala akong Facebook. I mean, when you network, kasabay nito, you're investing your time in relationships, investing your, you know, your resources on things that you know would work well for you. But network with people. Kung ang gusto mong career is into uh, uh, ano, AIIP, for example, then you network with people na may gano'ng klase ng work. No? People with ADB, people with World Bank, people, you know. So you network with people like that. If you want to be in a business sector, then network with people in business. Bakit? Because you become the average of the five people closest to you. And that's the reason why you network with different kinds of people. And lastly, always have goals and purpose. Um, I always have goals and purpose. You see, you cannot get anywhere in life if you don't know where you want to be. So, lagi, you should know where you want to go. Always know where you want to go. So, if you apply, you need to know where you want to go. So, if you ask, what are your plans in your life? Uh, yung iba, na-encounter ko pagbago ang plan. Um, huwag ka work po. And that's not enough. Kailangan at least meron ka plan. This is where I want to go. Then people know, your employers would know that you are a person that has ambitions and you have a purpose. You are a person with a purpose. Okay? Kaya lang, sabi ng iba, pagka pa alam mo na kung saan ka pupunta, you'll be successful. What do you think? If you know where to go, will you be successful? Yes or no? The answer is no. In order for you to be successful and get to where you want to be, the first thing, the very first thing that you need to understand and discover is where you currently are. Okay? Because para alam mo, you take stock of where you are, para then you will know how to get there and strategize. All right? So once again. The most, uh, what I learned and pick up today is branding. And so, uh, I'd like to congratulate each and every one of you. You're graduating, and that's not a small feat. That's a, a big accomplishment. Big palakpakan naman natin sila. Congratulations, and definitely you will experience uh, a lot of things in life, and you will experience so much joy. No? Uh, as you move along and experience life. So once again, thank you very much, and let's be proud to be human ecologists. Thank you, Sir Alexi. Yes, uh, So just some announcements before we go to the raffle. We na hinihintay niyo, ano? And please don't forget to answer the evaluation form. So the QR code link will be posted here on screen. You can also find that at the registration table. You can scan it already. So you can already get your certificate once you finish accomplishing that evaluation. 